G'day everybody, and welcome back for some more scrapyarding. And I'm out on the hunt for stuff. I was trying to remember what I got last week. And I think it was... I've got another battery, but I still don't have many power cells, so I'm hopefully going to find some more engines around the place. Got the battery, got the large grid small cargo, got a tiny little battery, and got a little bit of hydrogen, but I'm going to need a lot more of that. So, I guess I keep driving. May as well head towards that unknown signal, I suppose. How far am I from base? Uh, where's base? Base is the pink one. That's right. 28k is from base. Ready. Unknown signal. <laughs> well played. <laughs> well played, Takari. Uh, spawn planetary installation. Ooh. Oh! Ow! Up! Up! Uh. Well, don't think I'll be getting to that before I completely lose track of it. Well, let's have a go. Raise the ramp, yes. I really need to build some sensors when I get this back to base and have that sensor operated. Also, thanks Chipsticks, thanks for the prime sub. Thank you El Bob, for two years of tier two. Thank you very much. Uh, right, yes, exploring, trying to find stuff. Oh, tree. Oh, missed the tree. It's unlike me. So yeah, at the moment I think I'm mainly trying to find uh, power cells so I can add more batteries to the truck because I ended up adding the one battery that I can build to the forklift. The new event blocks are going to be a lifesaver. Yes, very, very much so. They are going to be so useful. I'm also looking forward to the 2x2 two two wheels. Because things like um, things like overhead like tramways and stuff like that I think might be easier with the 2x2s two and certainly little scooters to get around something like um, oh, is that at my level? That is at my level. Oh, that's that's craggies. That's craggies. That's craggies. Bad, bad craggies. Uh, Automatrons is dropping in April. Uh, Keen have not specified when in April yet. Uh, so hopefully it means that they've kind of gotten it to a state where we can use it. But I mean, like from my perspective, the AI, like the um. The autopilot stuff, while it would be really nice for it to function well, it's not the bit I was excited about. Because you won't really... I don't know, I I don't spend much time automating things in games as a general principle. Um, I tend to like being the human in the loop, so I don't necessarily use as much of that. Uh, whereas the event controller, I mean, in terms of fully automating, like, factory style, um, whereas the event controller, that's automating just tiny little things and making things more functional, and I think I'll use that more. Thank you, Orsa! <laughs> Thank you for your tier 3 sub for two years! Thank you very much. How's it going? Uh... I don't think I'm ever getting up to that thing. That looks like a mesa that I have no means to climb. It's kind of sucky. This may not be the best area for me to drive around. I'm trying to think of anywhere better on Earth-like that's easier to find stuff. And I am right now regretting my decision to not add Triton as a spawn point when I began. 
Although, to be fair, Triton's real boring with all the white. Just snow, 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 snow. Everywhere. Well, yes, I could use the wrong way up style arms to climb up the cliff, but I feel like... I feel like that's unnecessary. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> given I don't know what's up there and it could be something completely pointless, I feel like that might be too much. I'm seriously just stuck. Stuck. Thanks, Dunbaros. Thank you very much for the five gift subs. Thank you, El Ruo Bob. Thank you for a five as well. Uh, yeah. Mini RC drone. I don't have thrusters. Like, I've got, like... I think I've got one atmospheric thruster back at base. And that's it. One atmospheric thruster, one hydrogen thruster. That's all. Got nothing else. The crane arm is almost certainly strong enough to pull me up to its length, but its length is not particularly long when compared to the length of a, uh, a cliff around here. I think I might just be best off driving home at this point. There's going to be more stuff near base because it would have spawned a lot more, so I think I'm going to head back. And maybe we'll do a bit of rover redesign and definitely rover repainting. I... I clearly had a brain fart when I decided to paint this thing in dusty white. It does not suit at all. I was trying to go for a blank slate thing, but I think uh, white heavy rust would have been a blank slate for this. So let's head on home. I might get lucky and find something along the way. Oh, speaking of, I might get lucky and find something along the way. Hey, Mr. Free Hugs. Moving paint from this scenario would be hell for some. I, like, you could totally do this scenario where you force yourself to only use the paint gun. Uh, at least once I get around to adding the paint gun to the um, loot pool. There it is. What do we have here? We have a rover that is split in half. Uh, one half does not have much, but it does have intact wheels. The other half has a hydrogen tank and a couple of small cargo containers. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kitsu. Thanks for the 1,500 bits. That's very kind. Thank you very much. How's it going? I'm only a little bit tired this morning. Only a little bit delirious. Yes, this rover would be fixable. Not gonna fix it, but it would be fixable. I just want its hydrogen. And I am loving... Oh. Ooh, that was close. I was about to say, I'm loving my super powerful grinder. 22%. Oh, that doesn't even have much in it. Oh well. It's something. Uh, hmm. Might do the little tree of... Hydrogen tanks again. 
think that was fairly efficient. Uh, which side? Let's put it on this side. Sure, why not? That'll do. Uh, is an empty tank better than no tanks? I don't know. Empty tanks just kind of taking up space and adding weight. Can I build tanks? No. No, I cannot. No, no, those, these are regular cargo containers. They'll show up on both tabs. Doesn't matter which tab you're on. The regular cargo, the proper cargo containers will show up on both. It's the, um, oh, whatchamacall, it's the, the ones that are the cargo, the, the, oh, what are they called? Brain. Tell me. The freight containers, those don't show up if you're on the wrong tab. Cargo containers will show up on both. Uh, Nuke, I'm not sure that having explosive tanks underneath... Oh, I suppose I do have a bit of clearance under my bed, don't I? Well, they are all half blocks, so putting mag plates on there will be a pain. There might, there might be a few spots underneath the bed where I could put the small tanks and small batteries and things. I just worry about putting small tanks closer to the ground, where they're more likely to hit and go boom and take out my whole thing. Um, yeah, not sure how I feel about that, it's largely not great. It'd be great if you could set clean up to clean only a designated color. That would actually be amazing, and I, I, ooh, I wonder, I don't know that that would be able to be done at standard mod level, but I wonder if it'd be done, if it'd be doable in Torch. Because Torch plugins have access to a whole lot more stuff than the regular mod API does. I wonder if that'd be doable, because that'd be quite useful if anyone's like hosting a server for this, uh, where players can have a specific colour that is designated, if the whole grid is that colour, it gets deleted. I mean, it's probably simpler to have it so players need, can name a grid so that they can do their own cleanup. But I mean, you're relying on players to do their own cleanup and I think anyone who has hosted a server knows you can't trust your players to clean up their own mess. <laughs> so it's probably not going to be super, super great. But at least, you know, it'd be helpful for those for when it is done. I'm just well aware of um, one person who I play co-op with a lot and how unlikely it is that they would ever remember to paint or rename a thing that needed to be cleaned up. One of, one of the people I regularly play with these days would. TFE. He probably would actually do it. Shadow would definitely do it. Capac, not so much. And yes, in this instance, Capac is the lowest common denominator that I have to, have to think about when thinking about this stuff. Oh my gosh, what have I done? How have I gotten into this horrific terrain on my way back? Oh, 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 can I get up there? I can totally get up there. I'm going for it. Um, 
Alright, so if I go up this valley that I just came down. Oh, what have I done? Oh, badness. Oh, so much badness. That is very not place I want to get stuck in. Come on. Um, drat. <laughs> right. Do 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 Oh no, don't roll, don't roll, roll bad. Okay, don't turn that way. Let's try going this way. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Okay, now we turn down the hill. Come on, little truck, you can do it. You can do it. Yeah! And that is one of those situations where small grid is better than large grid. And spawn. Where'd that one go? That one is up top too. Okay. So I can follow the cliff line around, I guess. Maybe. Um, let's harden my suspension again. Strength ten. Yeah, beached on the craggies. I kind of wish that, um, <sighs> so. One of the reasons that I, I don't play with the smoothed planets, the smoothed voxels mod, is that it I haven't messed around with it enough to figure out where the right balance is. So the craggies are still um, there, but there's fewer of them on the planet. Because one of the things that the craggies kind of... One of the functions they serve is to provide impassable terrain, or almost impassable terrain. Um, and I think that's sort of an important thing in a game like Space Engineers, when you're moving around in a rover, you need to have some bits that you have to avoid. That's part of the fun of navigating with a rover. But, I was just trying to think, is there another way you could do that? Is there another way you could provide impassable terrain that wouldn't require horrible death crags? Um, and... I wonder, we've actually got different um, different friction settings for voxel materials because the ice is slippery. What if we had similarly slippery, dusty voxel? So when you're driving on certain voxel, you don't get much traction and you spit up a whole bunch of dust and there's big dust effects, so it makes it clear that you're um, that you're slipping because you're on dust. That could have been an effective way on certain slopes to make those slopes impassable without having the horrible craggies. Uh, I don't mean mud, because mud implies wet. Ooh, warhead. Uh, I don't think I want the warhead. Ooh, programmable block. I do want its explosives if I eventually find myself an assembler. Uh, air vent. Should I bring the air vent? I haven't saved an air vent yet. I think I'll bring one home. Some rifle ammo. Inventory full. Oops. I mean, mud would absolutely be fun, too. Um, I wonder if this is an area that um, Keen have been 
even contemplating yet with their work on V-Rage 3. Whether they're thinking about ways to make different voxel materials behave differently in the physics engine. I mean, they worked out ways to make the, the liquid simulation work like lava, so... Maybe if you made it thick enough, it'd act like mud? Huh. Yeah, Chip6, that's what I was saying. Ice has reduced friction, so couldn't we do it as a dust thing? Where you have dusty surfaces that are that you don't get much grip on. Whoops. Because I, like, I do think there there should be terrain on planets that is difficult or near impossible to travel on with a with a without some specialty settings on your rover. Because um, if you're just able to drive everywhere, it becomes very boring, and you're effectively the terrain becomes like the weather. It doesn't really change your game. All it does is mean that you can't as easily do the things that you're doing or that there's just a little bit of up and down that doesn't really add a lot you could define a slippery voxel material and add it to the planetary gener to the planet generator to be placed anywhere it's at the right angle yeah yeah Okay, I was, <laughs> I was a little worried I was going to be launched a lot further then. Oh no, oh no. Okay. Just discovered that I can uh, fling myself up into the air with this. Kind of want to do that deliberately at some point and see how high up in the air I can go with uh, clang propulsion. Oh, seriously, seriously. I've always got, always got the grinder out. I don't want to use the stabilizer thing. I'm going to jump up there first. Then I'm going to pick it up. Yeah, use your brain. Uh-oh. Oh, I know the controls. I'm just not using them. Scroll out, pushes away. Scroll in, pushes in. Um, the left click to stabilize... Part of the reason I don't like the I don't use the controls is because they they don't play nicely with build vision. And I always seem to end up with stuff disappearing from my hopper. Yeah, the little vent is probably more trouble than it's worth, but it was still trouble. Uh, I mean, it was still something. I'm okay to have it. Yeah, the, the ramp needs a lot of work. Definitely. It is not... It's not easy to use. Um, oh! Curse, you fence! Did I lose my plushie? No. Good. Ooh, I almost lost the battery. Oh, that could have been bad. Uh, I hope I've got the bits to make a cockpit. I mean, I've got the helm up there, so I could always repurpose that if need be. Oh, dear. That was nearly a proper disaster. I might want to consider moving some of my important parts back. <laughs> Having them right at the front of the thing is maybe not my best idea. Do 
Do I have more computers? Oh no. Oh no. Are there any computers left in that shed? Uh, do hinges have computer? Couple of computers there. Um, yeah, the programmable block might have a couple. Let's see, I need three more. What have we got in the trailer that has computers in it? You do. Vent does. Perfect. Five. Alright, we're good. I'm going to have to set up all my hotbar controls again, but we have functional cockpit. Network not off. No, my searchlight! That's what's giving all the zappy noises. I oh, want it needs more computers too. Right. What else has computers back here? The hydrogen tanks do, but if I grind them down, I lose all my hydrogen. What about this programmable block? Just two of them. I think I needed three still. Ah, uh, the headlights. I think I'll have to just cope without. Oh. Yeah, I'm taking them out of the, the connector. Headlights I think I will have to manage without unless I've somehow got the bits for them. Which I might do. Oh yeah, I do. I don't know why I completely forgot to be not stupid. Um, that was so bad. I don't know. I don't know. That was that was dumb. I should not have driven into a fence at high speed. That shouldn't happen. I should know better. Ugh. I also cannot see in this pea soup. Yeah, the fences I think are something that people are going to find is a little bit... <laughs> can be a little bit cruel in this. Looks like an edge there. A little bit. Uh, so, the fog makes me, uh, reminds me of something that I'm going to do next week. Uh, something that Nev has been working on recently uh, is a Twitch integration for Space Engineers. So it's basically a Twitch integration for a Space Engineers server. And we're going to be testing that out next Tuesday. So in the morning before I play Icarus with Capac, I'm going to be doing some uh, testing of that where you guys will be able to do a bunch of um, different things. Uh, the things we have so far will be stuff like triggering specific... Uh, MES mods to spawn triggering specific types of spawns and uh, like stuff like meteors and changing the weather 
And the idea of this test one is just to see, one, that everything works. Because then we're going to try and add some extra functionality to it with polls uh, and that side of things. So that it's not just a how badly can you bully Splitzy with horrible things stream. And it's actually more like here, uh, where you guys can help be helpful and spawn stuff like the MES encounters that I actually want. Um, so, the first stream is just going to be mayhem and ridiculous because we're just testing. But later streams, I actually plan to use this as a more effective way of integrating into... Um oh yeah, ramp, thank you. Uh, of integrating things into this. So instead of me having to run the command when someone does the redemption for the... Let me change is it. It's going to be one of those two, isn't it? When someone does the chat thing, I'll need... I'll, um... Just be able to have it happen automatically. And there'll be other things like that that I think, given a bit of practice with balancing, should be pretty doable. Uh, and pretty good for certain stream setups. Speaking of. Alright, let's head straight ahead. We know there's one there. I'm going. Hope there isn't a giant cliff over this hill. Thank you so much, Ratvink. <laughs> Thank you for the 10 gift subs. And I'll, <laughs> I'll see you later. Okay, it's going to be up that next mountain. Great. I'm not going to be able to get there. In this weather. So I just cannot see the terrain in front of me. Terrific. Uh, at the moment, Chozo, this is something we're developing specifically for mine uses. Uh, Nev may release it in the future, but that's not necessarily... That's not a definite thing, because I, it'll depend on, like, how much he wants to support... <laughs> the thing outside of just setting it up for me I think he plans to but it's yeah I can understand if he's like actually no I don't want to have to support this and provide <laughs> things outside of very specific circumstances wow I really cannot see anything in front of me At all. Oh, there's grass down there. I think I can go down this. Yeah, this is looking okay-ish. Maybe. Maybe not. It's, it's very uncertain. Um, unfortunately, since last week, I haven't really made any progress on the mod itself. I... Oh, I've been quite busy with other stuff. Um, namely... A certain miniature person but hopefully I'll get some progress done before next week yeah I'm kind of excited about testing out the the twitch integration thing I think it'll be fun and I think it'll be useful in weird ways unexpected ways in the future Ooh, hello that's three atmospheric thrusters those I have to pick up with the crane. They're too heavy for me to grab. 
Thanks, Keldox. Thanks for 11 months. Random junk out of those. Now that is a useful haul once I can clear it off. Ah, Mackle! <laughs> Thank you, mate. How's it been? I haven't seen you in ages. Thank you for the 10 gift subs. hoping to release them as a chunk. I didn't want to grind them l loose with the advanced grinding, advanced welding because if I did that, they'd be individuals and then I'd have to crane every single one. Uh, that's the exhaust pipe. Is there anything in here with computers that I can steal? Doesn't look like it. Alright. Let's get the crane going. Yeah, the orange planet in the sky would be Mars. This is standard uh, solar system start. There's nothing different about it from that point of view. Nah, the conveyors don't have computers. Uh, just one second, let me quickly do something. Got down to 13 degrees overnight, so I had to put Charlie in a um, in a little coat because she gets cold. She was starting to get warm and scratching at it. <laughs> All right. How much of my crane controls can I remember? She have little booties as well? No. No. Whoops. It's not where I thought it was. Oh! Uh, hang on. So, someone suggested an idea that I think is actually probably workable here. Uh, corner light. Nope. That's not what I meant to do, but that's fine. If I put corner light Maybe there, but probably better on the rotor. I'll do it on the rotor for now. If I put a little light on here with a different colour and have its range very short, it should give me a better idea of where this is located because the light should, ugh, should show up where the head of the crane is actually at. Then we go radius one, and let's go with blue. And the other light's too bright. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. I'm glad good things have been keeping you busy. Drop the intensity of these down. Maybe the blue will show up. Blue is not the right colour. Maybe green? Yellow? Orange? Hmm. I really can't see it at all. <laughs> Pink? Hmm. This doesn't work. Oh, maybe that. Oh, there we go. That kind of works. We'll stick with that. I 
gives me a vague idea. We'll see if it helps. See if we can pop this all the way at the back. Hey, Tex. Well, I don't want to turn my interior lights off because I still need to be able to see. <laughs> I mean, yes, I could argue that... Oh, that felt like I was pushing against the ground and i that's because I am. Ah. Ready to lock. Unlock. There we go. Wait. That's three extra thrusters, so I've now got like four Atmo thrusters and one Hydrogen thruster. That is progress towards... things? Thanks, Keldarks. I think I missed you in there. So did I... Did I miss a spawn? I think I missed a spawn. Oh, and pink the car. Yep, good point. Okay, that's in the wrong direction. Uh-oh. How far did I drive? I didn't drive that far, did I? Oh, man. Wonder when Splitsy will build a grinder pit to drop the junk cars into. Yeah. I haven't really been worried about collecting the components, like the general components. I've been still going after specific things. So I'm not sure that I will... that I'll feel the need to make a grinder pit. I don't know. I, I don't feel like I'm going to, but it's possible I will. Homeward bound. Yeah, I haven't hit many trees in this one. I've been trying to avoid them. Trees don't do nice things to trailers. They cause juddering and unpleasantness. It's not good. Yeah, if I was going to do grinding, I'd probably have to do a grinder trailer, wouldn't I? Yes, I have mostly been in desert and plains where there's a lot less to run into. Well, I had been avoiding fences. Oh, that's so tempting, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm going home. Uh, GPS. Let's get rid of those 4.31s. Uh, Toby's doing well. That is. I decided to make my own snow runner with dust and sand. And I know this feels strange to say about space engineers. Decent net code. But space engineers is like 10,000 times better than snow runner. something good. Uh, all the way home. I can imagine if I, if you were playing this and you had jetpack active, um, 
you'd probably go and do a lot of this scouting just with your suit. Zoom around, check stuff out, mark it, come back home, go out, collect it with your truck. Uh, Gems, you can't really do... You can't really do a crusher in Space Engineers because the, the thing you're crushing will do as much damage to the thing you're crushing with. Yeah. The, the thing with scouting with hydrogen is it doesn't matter if you run out because then you just respawn and go back to base and you've got fast travel. Which is something I obviously, despite having available to me in most of the times that I play Space Engineers, never take advantage of because I think it's... It just feels... I feel really lame when I do it. So I don't like to do it. Um, it's like I try and minimize how often I use uh, grinding through a wall to get rid of a turret. I'll usually make an attempt at clearing the turret by shooting it before I do something like that. Speaking of clearing turrets, maybe I should clear these assert observer bases. I found a bit of ammo. I might be able to equip... Oh, uh, yeah. I reckon if I collect enough of those little batteries, I might be able to make like a little tanky rover that's got a bunch of interior turrets on it or something. All right, let's let's check this out. Um, relatively close to home. Uh oh. Oh. It's a bit iffy. Uh, Perseus, yes, I'm going to test this in multiplayer, and I'm going to test this. Like, I'm going to test it properly with a bunch of different things to see what I could do with this playstyle. What might be feasible. Uh, I'm expecting it's still not going to be a uh, valid playstyle for larger public servers. But it might. it would certainly be a valid playstyle for a smaller little group of friends servers. I think it'll definitely work like that. Because pretty much anything that works single player is going to work for a small group in co-op. Uh, the only difference with co-op is you're probably going to end up with uh, more stuff more quickly. Thanks mostly AOL. Thank you for 17 months. Thank you very much. And yeah, <laughs> thanks Elemental. Um, yes, I completely agree. It is more fun to have risk in the things that you're doing while playing than having no risk. So um, I often get asked when I'm playing with like MES style bases why I don't just tunnel under them and it's because it is more fun to have some risk and especially if you're watching someone play you don't want to know that they're going to succeed you want to know that there's a chance that things could go horrendously wrong and that they'll make stupid mistakes trying to fix it oh here we go there's another one maybe I'll find the original one maybe I'll just find this one I don't know Isn't that why I bring Capac? Well, it's why I either bring Capac or I be that person. Because, like, even in Survival Impossible, I wasn't trying to do everything the perfect way. I was often trying to do it the hardest way possible. 
because that increases the chance of things going wrong. Yes, yeah, stupid things like hitting your car into a fence. Exactly. It's a lot closer than I was expecting it. What do we got? A pair of cars in the middle of nowhere. With what? No computers, no computers. Lame. Take your motors though. Because I'm going to have to repair those thrusters. Uh, I don't think I want any sort of impetus in a thing like this. This is a sandbox. This scenario is intended to be a sandbox. Where you just play it at your own pace. Play it how you want for this. If you want to add stuff to make it scary or whatever, go for it. But that's not the base game style I'm going for. I want people to just be able to play at their own pace. Play it their own way. Not feel forced to do it exactly the way that I prescribed for them. This is, this is my attempt at creating a scenario that is a sandbox. It's a different way to play in the Space Engineer's sandbox. Uh, there is no battery in the front of this car. Some, some cars have batteries in front of them. Some have engines in them. Some have... Oh yeah, there is a bat There are batteries in the front of this one. Sorry. Uh, but there are... Only power cells in one of them. And no computers, so... I guess I could take that one. Or not! Because I accidentally just ground it. Never mind. <laughs> Whoops. Heh. <sighs> Well, that was a special moment. I'm having a good day. It's a great day. Things are going fantastic. Inventory full. Oops. Let's go pick up those computers that I want. That seems to be all of the useful stuff out of this. Yeah, the tier 3 grinder definitely has its downsides. <sighs> but it's just so quick. When you're grinding something big, it's just so quick, it's so nice. Back to Homeward Bound. I don't know which of the two things I found, I think I found the second one, but... I found something, so that's good. Yes, you want to look in containers and you want to look for engines because engines are your power cell source. There are some... There's a chance you'll get some power cells from cargo. Uh, it is relatively low. But there's a chance. And I mean, the... Like, this is supposed to be an exploration... This is my attempt at adding exploration gameplay to Space Engineers. Even though it's a bit weird with the way that you know, stuff spawns around you and you know it's spawning and it's not just there in the world to be found. Um, given the limitations we're working with, I think it still feels pretty good. Yeah, I would completely agree with that, Zeronaut. I think... I think the hand tools, especially the elite tools, are too quick relative to the um, the grid-based tools. Something that I've noticed with the grid-based tools that I'm not sure has always been the case, um, particularly with the welders, they seem to only weld one block at a time. And I think 
that hasn't always been the case. I think at some point in the past, at least the welders were able to grind, uh, were able to weld up more than one block at a time, which meant that even though they were slower, if you had multiple blocks in range, they did them all. See you, Tex. Um, so you got effectively a faster welding. But ever since it only did one block at a time, they are horrifically slower than the others. Oh, alright, you're tempting me back. That should be just over that hill. Oh, speaking of hills. Uh, there are various mods out there to give the block tools more range, yeah, and more speed and things, but I'd really like the vanilla to change. <laughs> like, it's one of those things that's like, oh, please, come on, change the vanilla thing. Scrap oh there goes one tree. Scrapyard with aerodynamics. Um I honestly don't think it I mean it it'd potentially allow you to do scout planes, which might be nice. Like being able to make a little scout craft so that you can scout around with something that has thrust in a single direction because you've only found one thruster, that would potentially be quite valuable and having to mark it from the sky. But yeah. I, I don't think aerodynamics would do anything especially uniquely bad in this scenario or super overpowered in this scenario. I think it'd probably just play fairly well. Uh, but when you're testing a mod pack, you probably don't want to add extra mods that might break things. So I've only got my usual suspects in this beyond my personal mods. I have no idea how... Oh, well, that was a very lame wreck. I have no idea how the... how a default spawn in MES is handled when you've got the water mod active or not. Um, because I've never bothered playing with the water mod. Because the couple of times I've tested it, I just ended up running into jank immediately. And if I'm running into jank, you know Capac's gonna properly run into jank. Thanks, Dodie. Thank you for four months. Well, <laughs> you say if I if I was playing with Shaq, there'd be plenty of scrap lying around. Well, yeah. Uh, years ago, Shaq and I talked about how we'd both quite like to play this style of game, and it is interesting that we both ended up doing it at about the same time. Um, so, because it, it, it was something we talked about, oh gosh, it was literally years ago we talked about this. And I, it was only once, um, I realized I had the tools with MES that I made, I could make it work, that I started making my own way to do it. Oh yeah, our, our two approaches to it are very different, which is nice. But it is interesting that we both went for that 
concept at the same time. <laughs> Given we talked about it together years ago. Just trying to think what I want to do in terms of style for this truck. Because it really doesn't have any style. It is a really boring flat piece of steel with some containers slapped on it. I'd like to try and give it some design. Maybe I can lift the cockpit up. Yeah, Mackel, I think Escape from Mars kind of gave a lot of us that taste for how the game can be really fun if you if mining isn't your way for gathering resources. Oh, there goes another tree. Okay, that's close enough. I'm going for it. Turn around, turn around, turn around. Two kilometers. Dead ahead. Thanks, Maru. Thank you for 34 months. I'm um, I'm doing good. I, I could have used more sleep last night, but I'm doing good otherwise. <laughs> I think that's going to be the reality of my life going forward for the next however many years. Oof. Well, I should be running up to this soon. Still can't see anything though. Something else I've been thinking about with the redesign is because I need direct line of sight for the searchlight to actually target a thing, I might want to put it on a periscope of sorts, like put a um, put a piston there so I can stick it up higher when I'm searching for something. Okay, that's up top. That sucks. Put it on the crane. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> Could do that. I seriously thought I'd travelled far enough by now. No? Bing? Where are you? kidding me. This can't possibly be... It can't... It can't be further than this. My sense of distance isn't that bad. My sense of distance isn't that bad. My sense of direction is. But distance isn't that bad. It was just under... It was just over 2Ks. Where is the... Oh... I went for this one because I thought it was going to be easy. <laughs> uh, I'll go a little bit up into the hills, but not far. Uh, yes, I can look through the, tar the searchlight if I want. I could probably drive from that perspective. Uh... Yep, we can drive from here. We can look around. make myself motion sick. Although I don't really get motion sick. Unless I'm reading a book. Ding. 
got nothing. Nope, there goes another tree. So much for my not tree destruction in this. Ah uh, yes, there is a way to collect hydrogen. There's hydrogen in most of the tanks that you'll find that are intact. So you can collect hydrogen from them. I don't know why, but my loot table for ice doesn't seem to be working. Uh, but there's meant to be ice to be found. Uh, and I have not done anything to stop you from going out and mining some ice either. It could be, like, I've tried to put ice in the loot, loot table for the O2H2 gens. It could be that MES isn't able to put stuff in those. Because there are a few random inventory blocks that it has issues putting stuff in. But those might be one of them. So I may have to just add it to my regular cargo container loot. Uh, I believe the reason you get motion sick with reading a book in a car is because there's a disconnect between the vestibular center of your brain and your inner ear uh, and what your eyes are seeing. Because your eyes are moving quite a bit while you're reading. So that act of mo having your eye movement and not seeing the outside world, not seeing what's changing while you're balance centers are detecting that things are not quite normal. Yeah, there, there are, I've already cut, I've got an oxygen tank back at base. At least one. I think I took it back home. Yeah, exactly, Glitch. Body feels movement, or your inner ear feels, detects movement, and your eyes don't. VR does the opposite, with VR showing your eyes movement, and your body doesn't detect it, and it's that disconnect that for a lot of people can make them have motion sickness or simulation sickness, depending on which instance you're talking about. It's why uh, cockpit-based VR, where you've got a static part to it, is actually easier for a lot of people to tolerate because there's an anchor point uh, that makes the whole scene make more sense internally. Uh, but then with VR you've got all the whole lot of other stuff for simulation sickness like frame rate and the like that impacts it greatly too. Uh, I still think it's fascinating stuff to read into. I read into it a while back and one of the interesting things is apparently fighter pilots as a whole are more prone to simulation sickness with VR than the general population. They're so used to taking in information so quickly that they need a higher frame rate to not get simulation sickness. Which is really cool. Horrible for them, but fascinating to think about. Almost home. Yeah, it's... I... like... Capac and I are both fairly immune to simulation sickness. Uh, doing some of the trippy stuff in one of the warehouse VR experiences we went to, where, you know, you're walking around and they do, cur like, curves, gentle curves with the floor, so your 
perception of the universe shifts and then you're standing directly above someone looking up at them but they're standing on the ground below them all sorts of weird uh, gravitational shifts in this uh, game more of an experience than a game but it was actually loads of fun because as long as that stuff happens slowly I think for most people it doesn't make them ill as well but I can imagine that experience might be rough for some people. <sighs> Almost back at base. And I have to repair my connector. Offload all this stuff. Thanks, go back, Jan. Thanks for the 100 bits. I still think that um, Echo Arena and I can't remember what the storyline version of that game is, uh, has one of the more clever solutions to locomotion in VR making sense to the player. Uh, putting the player in zero gravity and having their arms be the source of locomotion because you've got wrist mounted jetpacks um, was such a clever solution because it, it just gives you a way of moving around without your legs ever needing to be involved So I always thought that was a really clever solution and a, and a really good example of a game specifically made for the advantages and disadvantages of the VR experience. It's just a pity it's on ugh, that platform. Not the VR platform, the specific one that's on. looked into whether you could actually get it to work with Steam though. Yeah, Lone Echo, that's what it was called. Right. Uh, load first, I guess. It was suggested that I make a system so I can just drive onto this with the forklift. I wonder whether I could. I could get down to that level. I think it would require some clever drilling and, and or lift platform. I think I'll just offload with the crane. And by hand, of course. Do -do 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 -do. Let's weld that up before I start moving it or grinding near it. Hey, red bearded engineer. <laughs> ah, that is not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Add this to my little small grid pile. Got thrusters there, batteries. Uh, yeah, why not? I'll do. Don't know what I want that for yet, but can't turn down a programmable block when I find one. stuff landing geared to wheels when I can avoid it. <laughs> that is always risky. It's a lot less risky than it used to be, but old habits and old fears die hard. So 
So my idea with this scenario is that you're supposed to get to space with a small grid first. The stuff that's in space will be more than likely slightly, like some of it will be slightly defended. Uh, where you'll have to learn which direction to approach it from, that sort of thing, as opposed to it being completely defended. Oh, that's not what I want to do. Uh, why not make the ramp wider? Uh, largely just because I haven't. I just didn't think I needed it for ages. <laughs> it's only since I've been running up and down it with the... Uh, with the stuff from, like, from picking stuff up that I've thought, actually, maybe I do. <laughs> My nice pile. Thank you. <laughs> Just my pile of things. Right, the rest of this needs to be done with the crane. Once I've done that, I'm going to see what we can do about making the crane easier to get to from the ground. And what might be do doable to make this thing look a bit more interesting. Ah, the pink was helpful. Uh, that'll be five, two. Let's pop this over here because I didn't put myself in a position to put it in the best spot. So, somewhere on the ground here. what would happen if you put the pilot basket out at the end of the crane um probably a lot of illness for people watching if i left it free spinning like it is uh but even without it i think it'd probably be pretty bad Event controllers are something I'm going to have to add to some of these grids so you can find them. I don't think you should have event controllers if you don't have programmable blocks. So no, I, I think... Um, I think those will be things you'll have to find to not be able to make. I think I left custom turret controllers makeable, but that was because I've left turrets makeable. Oh, that's missing. Lock and unlock. But yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't thought about that until just now. Whether I'd want the event controllers buildable or the AI blocks buildable. I honestly didn't see people using the AI control blocks all that much in a scenario like this. That felt like something that wouldn't really end up being all that useful when you can't rebuild things easily. I don't know that I would trust an autopilot to fly my expensive, my difficult to collect thrusters somewhere. <laughs> Seems dangerous.
Uh, Mike, I got rid of the stand-up option because it's cold this morning. I didn't want to have to stand up. <laughs> I just hid it for the moment. And was up late and up early, so it was just like, no, nah, I'm sitting. I'll spawn work while I'm at base. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Which direction? Yeah, you can use you can use the AI blocks with a rover just like we always have been able to with autopilot where instead of actually getting it to control the wheels, you just have it controlling the um a gyro and have the wheels so they slip. So it's effectively a hovercraft uh escape from Mars style. But yeah, other than that, you can't really make one. I think what spawned over here might be these power lines, although maybe those are closer than 2.3. Sure. Thanks, Cornelius. Thank you for 11 months. Yep, I think it's these uh, power lines. Yeah, that's definitely what it was. Oh, there's another thing. Two Ks this way. I get far enough from base that my the stuff that was here got deleted I thought I set it to 50 kilometers so I didn't think I got that far but maybe it's 25 that looks to be a thing in the grass off there thing. And it is a medium cargo container. A truck body with a support. Have you got anything good for me? Come on. Power cells. No. It's definitely not going to be power cells. Uh, let's bring this home, I guess. That's how I expected that to roll, but sure. Happy birthday! <laughs> uh, what did I miss? I was distracted. Oh, stupid. Yeah, the whole using mouse wheel when you're using build vision is a bit awkward. 
let's be honest, I'm not going to um, stop using it. <laughs> stop using build vision for the sake of that. Ah. Observer, observer. All right. Doop. Ramp should go up. Might as well get this unknown signal, get the little battery. Oh, poop, I didn't pink the thing. Oh, well. It is what it is. I've gotten too far from it now. Knowing me, it'll still take me like five minutes to find it now. Which is less than ideal. Uh, we can get rid of those GPSs from four. You'll hit it on the way back, don't worry. Oh no, my unknown signal's gonna go. It's only got four seconds. Didn't look at the timer before I started heading towards that. That was a silly move. To do, let's see if I've got the parts and the hot base to repair this. Okay, lock down. Uh, the assert bases at the moment will just be bases that happen to have turrets on them. None of the other functionality is there because I've turned off the mod. Uh, I think I was very much dreaming thinking that might have been a valid mod to start with at the very beginning. Oop. I think I just tripped over the thrusters. those. Drag them. Nope. Can push though. We'll get forklift because that's going to take a while. <laughs> Splitsy the order. Yeah. A little bit. Something else. 5Ks. Let's, uh... Let's do that. Yeah, Zerba, I... <laughs> I do like that the way that I've built this does give us the proper scrapyard feel of, you know, the good junk being, the good stuff being put off to one side and kept for later. Whoop. Oh yeah, this thing doesn't have a gyro yet. Whoops. I should be more careful. Yeah, 
Okay, thrust is over with the thruster pile. Battery. Space hoarders clanged alive. I'm assuming there's something. Some sort of hoarders buried alive sort of show that's existed at some point. Yeah, this is where I this is where I get my hoarding tendencies dealt with so I don't end up with huge amounts of junk around my house. Well, this and the large amount of Lego that's in my garage. Oh, the forklift was such a good idea to do first. <laughs> being able to move these parts without it being a massive fight of you know offload like trying to drag it around by hand definitely the best way to do it this uh, extend I grab you fairly square on Yeah, it has been a very long time since I did anything with the Lego. Ooh. I might have to rebuild my forklift to be able to lift this. Uh, let's do that. Let's fix up my fork controls. Oh, nope. That's not fixing. That's potentially making very, very much worse. Alright. So, forklift. Needs to be able to actually lift. For one. I mean, I could technically lift with this because I could use the top hinge, flip it out, and do stuff, but that's that's dangerous. So it's lifting and reaching. And I know that I just destroyed some components with those lights then, but we got plenty of components. As in construction components. Alrighty. There's there's danger and then there's just plain old stupid. That was getting to plain old stupid level. Ooh. Speaking of not stupid, uh, weld pad. Ah, I have a programmable lock and now I have a reason to use it. I can put it on the crane. I mean, the crane? The forklift. I can use it on the forklift. Yeah, I have a gyro lost in the grass somewhere. I'm not sure where. I'm going to try and get this to rotate the way I want it to be. Someone said in one of the comments there was there's apparently a way to reset your center of control to the center of the block. Whoops. I accidentally pressed the throw command. That's not good. Because <laughs> part of the issue I've got here is that I'm not actually controlling it from the center of the block. But I got there anyway. Yeah, the command I just used then was this one, by accident. Uh, we pick that up. We hold it, and we throw. That went a lot further than I thought it would. 
I was really lucky <laughs> that, that, that I was looking at something with the <laughs> programmable block. <laughs> wait, wait, oh wait, wrong thing. Second. Hang on, we gotta do something. Yep. Ooh. All right, uh, yeah. That is definitely overpowered. Huh. Yep, cap, I can shoot him behind enemy lines. Yeah, that could, that could be fun for me. I wonder if this is gonna be clangy and too close. Uh, yeah, it is an intended feature of the mod, but it is something I don't think I'm going to make much use of. Throwing warheads or throwing decoys? But, I, I, like, to my mind, given the strength that I applied to everything else, I should be able to maybe throw something, you know, 10 meters at most. That would be my thinking. Anything more than that, and it seems very overpowered. Because, like, if I'm if I'm kind of clearing a building, sort of thing, is what I'm imagining, and see a turret up ahead, and so I throw a decoy around the corner, then immediately pop out and shoot the turret. That's a really cool use of the mechanic. But being able to throw it several hundred meters, that's that feels wrong. <laughs> Feels very, very wrong. And yeah, you can throw armed warheads as grenades as well. I think I'll go three pistons, even though I suspect it's going to be pretty rare I'm going to want to use all three. Just in case there is a situation that comes up. It might be nice to have them. Um, I think the slight backwards lean I've got on the forklift is about right. Because it means that any load is sort of held on the forks. Or at least if in a real world forklift that's how it'd be. Now... Let's check something. How do I know which way round this piston part is so that I can do it correctly? I think instead of using piston parts to try and make this work, I am going to uh, use a couple of merge blocks and just merge block those two together. It's a lot safer. It's about to be like, oh, I'll just grind off one piston part do my line, put my piston part on, and then attach. But if you get them 90 degrees off, uh, the whole thing explodes. Oh. Right. Let me jump up there. Plate. In 
theory, that bottom row of blocks I just placed should be attached to piston parts. Assuming small grid also has the side mounted attachment. Yes, it does. If it's held up there, it should be fine. Uh, now, what I want to do is do this. Because I didn't want the merge blocks as part of the construction. Do I need to put a hinge up here? Am I likely to use it? Not really. I think I might just build this out of plate. Put it in just in case. What would be the reason for it though? When would I just in case need it? Like, what I'm thinking is, um, with this as the piss, as the forklift arms, I'm gonna need to raise this a bit just to get the bottom bit done. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm not going to worry too much about it, about tipping. Because uh, what I might do is actually have the thing so it can just tip a little bit. But I shouldn't... Because all the tipping up there is going to do, it's not going to bring the center of gravity back. It's actually going to push it forward. So it'll make it worse. If I if I had the space and if I'd moved the pistons one... Or if I'd moved the pistons one block forward and then used hinges there, then the tipping back would have potentially been useful. Uh, so, what we're going to do is go grab the park script. Oops, wrong thing. Where's the renaming of the group? String name. Forklift. Forklift. Park. Copy that. So we've got helm. Piston, 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 piston. Group name. Let's see if I get something. Oh, it's down. No. Oh. That's lame. Well, maybe not. Uh, I'll mark it anyway. Yeah, so I'm not... I'm probably not likely to use the rearward tipping all that much. And I do have this, these filled with junk as a bit of a counterweight. So that's why the rear is sitting lower, because these, this suspension is actually compressed. I think this setup is going to be much better anyway. Each of these pistons. Hello, Charlie. Your head is very annoying when you put it on my hand. Yeah, that's why you do it, isn't it?
file. Yes, I know the thing is set to control wheels, that's fine. Piston, custom data. Park, block sharing must be set to no share. What? That doesn't seem right. So, if I go... I think I'll change it to pitch up. So pitch up at... We've got three of them, so let's go 0 0.2 and minus 0 0.2. I'll put that on every one of the pistons. Because with a... with a driving vehicle, hopefully I don't need to worry about um, having pitch up and down on these controls. Function. And no clang. And look how high it can go. It is a proper fork lift now. I need to go up a little bit higher. Because I wanted to be able to easily place down these next blocks. check to see if that's high, if that's low enough. It's a little bit off the ground, so I probably want to go a little bit higher. I mean, one block more. Needs a spinny light on the back for health and safety. Yes, sure. It is a forklift after all. Paste that up and just change the left to right. Okay, so I'm going to remove that from the hot bar and I'm going to move it down to here. Get rid of those, and we have left, switch lock, right, switch lock. And now I have an easily controllable forklift. It should be able to tip itself over slightly. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Alright, for test number one, let's pick up this cargo container. Uh, yeah, I'll, t I'll take the forklift over to the gyro and see if I can grab it. Because I can't... I can't really move the gyro with uh, the improvised engineering mod. It's too heavy. Oop, crunch. I love being able to control the forks at the same time that I drive this thing. Let's get merge blocks.
How to build real storage shelves to place items on. Oh, I've thought for so long and hard about how to make that sort of logistics make sense in Space Engineers without just creating a world of pain. And I have not yet come up with an answer. But part of me dreams of a world where managing logistics and like moving whole crates of things is better for a reason that's fun, not just painful, uh, than doing it through just using a connector. And I, yeah, I don't know. I haven't come up with anything that works. I haven't come up with any idea that I feel makes sense. But I mean, it could be like the scrap mod side of things where, you know, eventually I'll be like, oh, that's how I should do it. That'll totally make it fun. Speed. Let's try 40. Yeah. Perfect. We have a safety light on the forklift. I really need a button to turn that on and off. Can I do that with L? No. Oh, yes. Good. feel safe now. Should probably not feel safe. Especially when I leave the bit behind when I stop it. Clearly we have not had that bug fixed yet. Roop. 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 Where's the gyro in the grass? here somewhere isn't it oh that's a that's a railing let's go around the building not through the building it's probably safer well <laughs> it stops moving right ah uh, you got me there yep you have got me there <laughs> you think there's ever going to be a vanilla three by three piston oh, i hope so I was thinking about this the other day. Now that we've got the one by one um, advanced rotor, there's no good argument that I can think of for why we don't have a three by three piston. So I think I think we should, but I I hope we do. It's probably another way to put that. Uh, yeah. I, I have seen Chipsticks 1, and I am tempted by it. <laughs> I don't often get tempted by block mods, but Chipsticks has made a couple of things that have been comments that I've made, and I'm like, oh, I kind of really want that. Like the shower block with light. Because that's how that block should totally be in vanilla. Yeah, I imagine a 3x3 three three piston with the extension of the standard one. It probably needs to be more... Oh, I should think about it. I don't... I wouldn't want it to be just by default superior, but I guess because it's 3x3, three three, it's not by default superior, since it's big and you can't necessarily fit it in everywhere. Uh, are you serious? I think you mean one or two weeks since they are releasing it in April. Uh, let's bring this around to the crane so the crane can lift this gyro and stick it on top. Boop. 
It's a little bit sketchy. Alright, so I need to pick that up with the crane, because just checking. Yeah, no lift. Which way is it? I think what I'll do is I'll try and just shove the gyro on top of the cargo container here. But before I do that, since I destroyed a bunch of computers, let's check how many I have. Nine, seventeen, eighteen, fifty. Okay, I've got heaps. Can use merge uh, the well pads. to disconnect from the base. It is annoying that you can't zoom in after a certain point. Fast. And we do... Nope, not that way. lined up. Close, but not quite. Uh, I might try and spin this around a bit. I'm trying to get this so that I'm grabbing the gyro on the top, because obviously that's going to make it a lot easier to grab hold of the... Uh, to place it down. Forklift is in a terrible position for me to try and do this because the forks are going to get in the way of my crane. Let's move it forward. Some stuff for some weld pads. Actually going to be harder than just coming around here. Uh, Zeba, when I first built this crane, I already had a, I already had braking torque on it. I just didn't put much on it. I put a little bit more on it last week. Because people were mentioning how ill it was making them, <laughs> so I felt bad. Uh, but yeah, there's like 250 nanometers of braking torque on it. Newton meters. Nanometers? Why did I say nanometers? It's Newton meters. Should be pretty good. Uh, actually, let's lower it down to make it a bit easier. Now I can do the weld pads. Yes, Yotta Newton meters. Hmm. 
Gouda meters. Mm. And now I want nice cheeses. Pretty close. Oh yeah, it's getting pretty close. Let's see what I can do with the camera. I'm just gonna unlock. See if I can jiggle it at the other end. Let's get it to weld down. Don't grab it by the spinny light, it goes badly. Yeah, don't grab things by moving subparts. Game no like that. Uh, for those of you who remember Survival Unlikely, the moving subparts thing was the reason Capac flipped the bit of pill when taking off from Mars. That's what I was meaning to press. There we go. Brain eventually caught up to what I was doing. What is my battery doing? Rust and ready. Stored power. Basically fully recharged. Cool. Thanks, Zinder. Hangar is looking pretty empty. There's no... Uh no thing in it. No gantry crane that I want to put in there. Ooh, 3.5. Alright, so we got three, four, three or four things I could go out and look for, but what I'd like to do. Let's just quickly check and see if I have any power cells left and how many there are. Yeah. I've got three, five. And the best of these small grid, the largest small grid batteries needs five. Okay, they both need... Oh, one needs five, one needs six. So I can put a full functional battery on my crane truck, but with it being fully charged... Like, this battery being fully charged, I'm not sure I need to worry about it. Uh, I may save those batteries for putting on the thing. On a flying machine. Yes, unless I hit a fence. But, on the fence topic, what I was thinking of doing <laughs> was moving this battery to fit to sit opposite where the hydrogen engine is and maybe put the second one in line with that so that we got two batteries on one side two hydrogen engines on the other uh, and then I was going to potentially lift the cockpit up to here like put the cockpit on top the advantage I see in having like a full industrial cockpit or something up top yeah, it might get in the way of the crane from a few perspectives, but it probably won't, because I mostly work off to the sides. Um, but the advantage I see of it is I can then make a very clear stairway or ladder way to get up to the cockpit. Plus, if I use a full-on cockpit rather than one of these ones, uh, they have a better interaction area that makes it a lot easier to get in and out. 
I normally dislike the interaction areas on cockpits, but there's certain times where, like, the helm is really painful to get in and out of. Yeah, I should repair this battery. <laughs> that is probably a good idea. Ah, the shaking's fine. Don't worry about the shaking. Alright, I'm going to take this off. I'm going to rearrange the front end. So that's easiest to do while I'm at base and connected to the base. Because then I don't need to worry about power because I'll get power from the base. Let's get rid of the cockpit. I'm going to need to pick up most of these blocks, I think. Uh, we need to get these programmable blocks off and the gyro off. And the searchlight I can make, so I can just grind it down. I can make them right. Not misremembering. Yep. Get rid of the searchlight. Uh, gyro. Let's weld you up. Pop you off. Where do I want to put the gyro? Where's a safe spot for the gyro? <laughs> that I can easily reach with my crane as well. Uh, yeah, I want to put some sort of bumper on it. I've made a bumper before in... Escape from Purgatory that I kind of like the design of, which I was thinking of doing a bit of a revised, hopefully improved version of. Uh, right. Where did that gyro end up? I think it might have fallen off. Oh no, I can't use the crane easily without disconnecting from the base. Gareth, that's going to be annoying when the I need to do the battery. Gyro jiggle itself too. Onto the ground. Delightful. Uh, the trailer does have little batteries, so that'll probably be enough for doing the movement of the battery. Has it always been so jiggly? Yeah, kind of. The gyro is in a bad spot. I was trying to think if I can get this down, and but the gyro is still just a bit... Oh, oh, no, don't. No, don't rotate. Oh. Spin you. Spin. Spin. There we go. That works. Should be relatively easy to grab now. Cool. Now where do I want to put it? <laughs> I think... I think maybe along that line of... Conveyors could be good spots for the two gyros. Yeah, the gyro is too heavy to carry. Uh, I did that on purpose because I I wanted gyros to be one of those things that is a bit annoying and adds some challenge.
You add it between the connector slash engines. Uh Oh, I think that'd be tricky. I think I'll just, I think I'll place them on top. Where I'm thinking is one there, one there. I think that'll be pretty sufficient. See you, Shinigami. Uh-oh. Uh, all right. I'm going to have to lift that up because I cannot reach the bottom. But... Or maybe I can. Weld it during the jiggle. Come on. There we go. <laughs> I really did that the hard way. Now, once I get this front end remodeled, can someone, once that's done, can someone remind me to see what I can do about maybe putting some sort of hinge-mounted uh, ramp onto this cockpit, onto this helm? Sweet. Can't believe I got that to work in one go. How annoyed are people going to be when these two gyros are not rotated the same way? Chiggly just sounds nerve-wracking. I guess I've just become, like, deaf to them a little bit. I, I honestly barely notice them these days. Yeah, orienting your gyros for functional reasons with override does make a lot of sense. Um, when you're in a situation like this, though, the amount of extra effort required to orient them the same way is uh, significant. So there's a part of me that's like, eh, how much do I care? Seriously? Okay, this camera is not necessarily helpful. It is. Hey, it is. Wait. All these different cranes I've built, and finally I've made one that uh, seems to work reasonably well for me. Yeah, alright, I'll rotate it. Deliberately the wrong way. Um, <laughs> no, I think, I think I'm going to get the right way. We will see. Not what I want to press. All right, let's get the weld pad on there. Whatever way it is, it will remain.
to get on there and help keep it in the right spot. Hooray! Matching gyros. In a safer position. Now at least the programmable blocks I can move by hand. I'm just thinking about where I'd want to put them as well. Particularly from a style point of view. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, that wasn't too hard. And I think the combo of weak uh, improvised engineering mods so that I can still move things a little bit with more than just bumping into them. Uh, so you've got a bit more feeling of control. And having a crane that can actually manipulate things in the directions I want it to. The combo is working out quite nicely for me at this point. I'm thinking... I'm going to do one thing first. Uh, this. Sick of the too much wine. I'm going to go back to Rusty. Then... For the programmable blocks, I'm thinking maybe somewhere under here. Like, if I put... If I put them on the end of these bits. Something like there. So I should be able to... Oh, no, I'm only going to be able to do that for one of them. Which I should be able to do... No, no, I can't. Dang. I literally can only do it for one of them. One of them I'll have to use wild pads for, but the other one I can cut free. There we go. Nope. That was grabbing the wrong thing. Put them down there, make sure you do not bottom out on something. Yeah. I just thought they'd look nice there, if I rotate them the right way. Uh, so what I was thinking to do with this was grab the mini merge block. And cut that out. Mini merge there. Mini merge there. Still be able to pick this up. Yes, good. Let's see if I can rotate this the right way. Because the rotations with this are weird. Oh, maybe I can roll it like that. I uh, don't think I've died in this series. There we go. I think that's one block further out than I want it. Dang it! <laughs> that is a block further out than I want it. Uh, poop. Oh, I'm using up computers. this one. Yeah, there's not much around to kill the, kill me other than me. Because uh, this is very much meant to be a more peaceful way of playing. Where the engineering is where the fun comes from. Rather than combat engineering. It's just plain old civil and structural engineering. I guess there's a little bit of mechanical engineering. Cranes. I honestly don't know how those things get divided in the real world. Oh. Nope. 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 
That is all the rotation buttons pressed. And I still am not getting the rotation I want. Ah, oh, come on, game. There's some control I'm forgetting. Oh, poop. There's a control I'm forgetting that's supposed to allow you to grab it from the center of mass, which I think will fix that rotation issue. But... Oh! Okay, that's challenging. <laughs> I can't... I can't grab it because of the highlight. I wasn't able to stabilize it. No! Don't twist that way! Twist that way. Oh, you rotten thing. Come on. Yes! One down. One to go. Yeah, someone mentioned it in one of the comments on the VOD on YouTube. Uh, and I did read the comment. And I now can't remember what... I have to grab it, slightly pick it up. Nope. Nope. Who'd have thought these would be the hardest block to pick up? There we go. Don't be like that. Come on, come on. <laughs> Make grunting noises. Surely that'll fix it. No! Oh. Do this. It's so hard to pick this block up. Keep it stable. Because I keep interacting with it instead of stabilizing it. No, don't you grip onto there the wrong way round. I don't know that picking it up by weld pad is going to help me, but I'll give it a go. I need to flip it over. Yeah, because then it's just... It just wants to tilt forward when I do that. I need to pick it up lower... I need to pick it up in a way that it doesn't want to tilt on me. Hang on, if I... Try and turn it around a bit... Grab it. I try and stabilize it there. Is that going to be enough? Nope, because I've still grabbed it from a corner. Oh, why? Why do these things never... These mods are cool, but... Wow, do they just... Oh, come on. Yes! <laughs> wow, do they work hard sometimes. Oh. Yes, Charlie. I hear ya. I hear ya. Oh. Eggs, spam nutrition. Ah, <laughs> uh, hey, Oh, poop. From the VOD, after hitting R to grab the block, you can press the right mouse button to toggle between grabbing at the point you were looking at and the center of mass. More importantly, pressing the left mouse gets you through this. Yeah, yeah. I knew about the left thing. Thank you. Press. All right, let's try that on the beacon, I guess. No fight. 
Oh, Charlie. No, right mouse does not select center of mass. That throws it. Cheeky, someone was messing with me. They wanted me to throw it. It's quite the yawn, Charlie. Feel like I am being toyed with. I do, Charlie. I do. Oh yeah, Charlie's getting good at yawning at the microphone. Um, <laughs> it's become her new thing. Where do I want the beacon? I think maybe I'll try and get it in between the gyros in the middle. blocks will let me, which they may not. Because it may not drop down in there due to the collisions. Alright, yeah, we'll place it a bit back. Oh, that's good to hear the number six. Finally able to play. That's done. Cool. Clearing up my front end. Now, where are the other batteries on this thing? You guys are on auto. You are coming off. Now the crane. Battery, why? Why would you do such a thing? Connector is intentionally not locked, because if I lock the connector, I can't see anything. Um, if I if I lock the connector, my view goes out to here, <laughs> and so I can't see what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, I have intentionally left it unlocked. Alright, let's get some merge blocks sorted for this. So obviously I've got to start with the one closest to this end. Which means... Smudge block against there. Block on there. Wait, is that right? Or is it more blocks? It's more. Yeah, it's three blocks, it's not two. I gotta love the jiggling. Everything jiggling. Yeah, initially I'd been using the batteries, I'd intended the batteries to be a bit of a counterbalance, like a balance weight-wise, but I think uh, given, given the stability I've seen so far and the fact that the trailer actually adds to its stability, I'm not too worried about um, getting extra stability out of the batteries. I think I'll get enough. I 
pushing against the wheel. Alright, let's try and get this rotated the right way. Nope, that's the wrong way. I think this might be a case of have, having to drop it, because I picked this up in a way that I... Oh, hang on. Uh, if I spin that one... Round that way. And spin that one round that way. I then get the controls I need. Maybe. Stability hasn't been a big problem. The hat showed that. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, the and the removal of that. Taking off the hat. That was the real tricky bit. And I need to get those two angling hinges 90 degrees offset from one another. Up. That. Close am I? Might switch to camera view. Might switch out of camera view because that's really jiggly. Kind of close. Uh, that's pretty close. What can I fix? Hey, got it. That was awkward, but successful relatively quickly by my standards with this. I think I might bring over the other battery and just attach it now. May as well. I know I was thinking I'd save it, but I think I'll just bring it over. Where did I leave the forklift? Does anyone remember where I parked the forklift? Out in the field over here. Uh, it's the wheels that are... That are kind of being all jittery that are causing that constant noise. Uh, there's not much I can do about it, really. I think it's partially related to the connector as well, which I can relock, which might help it slightly, but I don't think it makes a huge difference. Yeah. Uh It's a bit awkward. Oh. Nope. Squeeze. Yay. If I bring the truck out, could I possibly be clever and actually use the forklift to get this battery on? Uh, that would be a resounding no because the wheels are going to be in the way. Okay. I'll just bring this around then. Well, sort of found a use for, the, for a hinge to be on the forklift, but not really because the forklift still wouldn't have been able to reach. And if I add more function to the forklift, it actually gets harder to use for the simple stuff, which sort of defeats its purpose as well, a little bit. Like, it's meant to be a simple, quick thing to do some basic movements, and then the more complex stuff, I'll use the crane. Or the um, gantry once I make one of those. With extensions on the battery. Oh. Oh, I like your thinking. That could work. How many extensions do I need? Be like one, two, three, four, maybe like six blocks out. 
need to put a cockpit back on the <laughs> on the truck so I can drive it. Uh, cockpit. Do do do. Break on off. Let's get out of here a bit. Oh wait. Almost did a bad thing. Give the forklift some room to maneuver around me. That should do the trick. And what I'm going to do is add a bunch of steel plate off one side and we will grab it from that. Yeah, Kayla, one of the reasons that I think space is the place to give players access to all of the various thrusters and jump drives and whatever else you want uh, is once you're in space, you can use zero gravity construction methods, including stuff like uh, being able to... Can I tip this over? Yes. Including stuff like being able to... Um... <laughs> Jeez, Charlie. <laughs> Stuff like being able to build a zero-g mover so that you can move parts around and it's effectively like using a jetpack. Well, either that ramp need the bit of shelter needs to go away or the ramp just needs to be rotated 90 degrees. Charlie! No. Dog. Enough of that. You keep making the weird noises though, they're funny. Need lights. Yeah, a little bit. Need weight in the rear, I think. Doing things this way. This is a bit iffy. All right, lights. There we go, I've got lights. Pretty sure you meant functional lights, but there are lights. This will work. So now I just need to pop down a couple of merge blocks. I can get this thing stuck down. So if I go on top of this battery and on top of this battery. I should be able to do this with the forklift. Perfectly. <laughs> That's ridiculously easy. All right, let's go get those power cells. I think with the fact that my base can actually... Oh, they must be in the other part. The fact that my base can actually charge the rover at a decent pace... Hopefully, that is likely to have solved most, if not all, of my power problems, unless I do something stupid. 
let's be fair, is entirely plausible. The other power cells I saw. Uh, no. That's right. I used them on something. Didn't I? Did I? Only paying half attention, it looks like the forklift lost its forks in the operation. Sort of. I need three more power cells, and I don't have any more power cells. Oh, I wonder if I've got power cells in here. That's why I saw them. I do! It is the wrong way around. Perfect. That's not going to annoy anybody. No, definitely not. <laughs> I'm not touching it. Oh, uh, actually, I could fix this quite easily. Uh, and I'm going to do it because it requires a little bit of fun engineering. Doop, 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 doop. 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 Okay. That's wrong. Uh, I need to grab it first. Which means I need to give it a support. Grind it off. Then I can do that. Who else saw that happening? Thought that was going to be too heavy. How the heck am I going to get this out of here without causing clank? Oh, this is going to be awkward. See if I can safely get this out. Oh! That's gonna make it so much worse. <laughs> That's gonna make it so much worse. Let's reverse up. I'll put a little grabber bit on there. Something, something to grab. This is all because I'm kind enough for those who would have been upset by this. Totally not because I might have been upset by it. Oh! It's close. Right, let's give it a little bit of a support structure. Now. Oh wait, I should just be able to grab it here. That should work. I was going to put a rotor in there and spin it on the rotor, but uh, in the act of getting it out, it has spun the way I wanted it. didn't need to do anything. And the lesson here is weld the thing up before you attach it. Uh, sure. Locked. Okay. Uh, I think it was the rotor that ended up tipping the battery for me, because the rotor is much heavier than the uh, other bits. Than the steel plate. Rotors are actually fairly heavy. Snakes are fun to watch. I hope so. <laughs> Otherwise I'm in a lot of trouble. Because mistakes are what I do. I mean, obviously, they weren't what I did when I was doing just tutorials, because 
You don't really want mistakes in tutorials unless they're a clear learning point. Uh, and some of the ones that I did leave in for the tutorials were specifically because I was like, actually, this makes the learning better, not worse. But like the kind of, oh, I should have done this sort of thing in a tutorial is, I think, just not okay, man. Oh, lots of takes for the tutorials. Don't worry. There we go. Perfect. Batteries as they were meant to be. Okay, Doki. With that in place, uh, this does extend further than the engines do, do, but I'll put another engine on that other side to match at some point. This is the way I normally do my batteries. I like the deco elements. Uh, these bits kind of going down and then coming back up. Or, similarly, that end joining up to that end. I dislike having them go in sequence. Most of the time. Crane ramp? Uh, yeah. Let's see what we can do with that. Really want to put it there. I might have to. Let's see what I can do. Let's see if I can get away with putting something here. Ah. Nuts. That's annoying. Um Yeah, I'm not I'm not down with that. What could I do to make that not be a problem? Okay, this way. Could put a button on rotor to reach hitbox. Huh. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know that I can build a ramp on this without it making the thing hang crookedly. I think I'd need to redo the whole crane control. I think instead, what I'll do is, as I'm doing this redesign of the front end, make an easy way to run from the front, like jump up and run along and get up to the height of that instead. I think that'll be the better approach here. And one thing I should be able to do as well is maybe a ladder will fit there? No, it's going to collide with wheels. No. Still no ladder. See you, Jack Slope. Uh, I don't think there's any attachment points here. Yeah. Unfortunately not. You, I can't do anything on here because I didn't put any spacer in there. It's one of those things... I just forgot when I was designing it that I probably wanted to put at least something to attach to on that. Because that would have been a better place to put the crane controls anyway. Would have been on this base part. Um, yeah. Oh well. It is what it is. Let's see what I can do about this cockpit. So let's get the front end designed and then I'll see how 
like what sort of cockpit design seems to suit it. So we obviously need a crash bar. <laughs> uh, conveyor frames do not have side point attachments. No, Nev. Uh, which is less of a problem than it used to be because we've got the uh, conveyor converters. Which obviously you can't pass large things through, but at least you've got a way to put a conveyoring system in for certain things. But yeah, it's always been a bit of a pain that you can't attach things to the side of them, even though it visually makes sense. Crumple zone being designed. Um, oh, lock the crane to the ground and disconnect it. Oh, that sounds. Now yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine with how it is. I'll I'll make a different way of getting up to the crane controls. I'm not gonna mess with. <laughs> I'm not gonna mess with that when it's working. It ain't broke. Don't break it. Alright. So, for a bumper, let's push out another block further. I don't want it too far in front of the wheels, but I do want it in front of the wheels. Might go with these for how I attach to it. So what I did in Escape from Purgatory was I used the barred windows as my bumper. So I felt like they kind of it gave a nice grill look to it. Let's see if we can get something that looks alright with this. You don't use first person much. Make the controls face the rotor, then the ramp centered. You would rock side to side. Ah. <laughs> uh. There's a part of me that wants to do that, and there's a part of me that's like, no, it'll look silly. Because then it won't look like it's controlled. But there's still a part of me that wants to do it. This is the risky bit, because this might clip the ground. Helps if I get more girders. Ah, uh, this is this is more to save me from the evil fences. The fences of my own making. A subgrid. No, no, no. I, I under. You're right to want to do it that way, but I, I think I'm going to uh, get rid of these extra tools that I don't need. Um, I think I'm going to leave it as is, rather than going full on subgrid with it. Hey, Lucian. Hey, lying in bed. To get me a drink. Hey, Kieran. Uh, so, these are going to go across here. They may clip the ground, and if they do, they're cheap. Let's weld these up and see how it looks. I 
this might work. Yeah. What? Oh, jeez. Yes, for ramming speed. Hopefully not too much ramming speed, but at least if I do ram into something, I've got a bit of a crumple zone to get destroyed instead of critical components that were there before. someone is this. Yes. That, and then... That. Yeah. Um, yeah. A Mad Max bumper, bumper does make a lot of sense in this context, I would say. Now I've obviously extended this space out here, so I probably could put more things up front. I might even put a medium cargo in here, once I see where the cockpit's going to end up. Because I think that could work. We want that there, and that, and that. No, pistons, pistons don't really work as shock absorbers. Pistons can be useful under extreme con like with extreme collisions but one of the downsides of it is you'll often end up with the piston part embedded in the ground so it'll stop your grid from getting destroyed but it'll potentially destroy your grid when you free it um so there there are risks Now, if I'm clever about this, I might be able to get rid of that. And that one. And now we can put spotlights in there. That is not a spotlight. In fact, I think what I'll do is not use the offset ones because they don't reach as far. I'm going to get rid of that and get rid of that one. And I'm going to use actual regular old school original spotlights. Just got to make sure that the bars are facing the same way. Yeah, drills and grinder blocks can take quite a bit of a collision. Um, definitely, when I, whenever I have the time to think it through, if I've if I'm crashing a mining ship, I am going drills in first. Uh, I've done that quite recently <laughs> with assertive acquisitions when I crashed the drill ship when I ran out of hydrogen. If you go drills in first, there's a good chance you'll survive anything but the worst of collisions. Yeah, you can get that weird thing that Space Engineers sometimes does where it sort of... It seems like it propagates damage through non-deformable blocks. Or even through deformables. 
But generally speaking, I'm still going to try and hit with my drills first. Does it work better if the drills are on? I don't think so. I don't think it makes any difference. Because uh, you'd have to be very lucky for the drill tick to happen at the right time for the drills to matter. Like, the drills being on to matter, I think. Back in the early days where drills worked most game ticks, rather than being delayed like they are now, maybe it would have made more difference. Hey, Resolve Fate. Hey, what's going on? Uh, the... the the jiggling is... Wait. Did you turn yourself on? No. It's the jiggling. Huh. I don't know. I thought it was jiggling before because of the being attached to the base, but it might actually just be from the crane. And other... Odd forces going on around here. this down. And I gotta think about how I want to do this cockpit design. The parking brakes are on. But it's just, yeah, there's something's making the wheels move a little bit. Which my guess is the crane. Something about the crane and the number of Oh, it could be the number of uh, physics objects in the local area that it's just not quite calculating right. So, if we want to go an industrial cockpit, I kind of want it set up fairly high. See how this would look. Too up? Maybe not. Oh, yes. It's a funny noise, Charlie. Yeah, I either want to go further forward or further back. I'm not sure. I'll try further back first. Since further back is safer. Indeed. Hi, Charlie. Uh, yes, monster. Yes, I know you're there. I do. further forward. <laughs> oh no! Too far. Let's try it all the way forward and see if I want it one block further back. I just wanted to push it far enough that I felt like there was a change. Could work and then what I can do is I can have like a little uh, platform at the back of this although Energy. annoyingly no. the industrial cockpit does not have a rear entry uh, it doesn't have a little door like the normal cockpit does I wish it, I wish it did because it'd be so practical for it to have one I wish you could walk up to the back of it and get in No, no, the enclosed co cockpit doesn't need an air vent. I uh, haven't needed air vents on enclosed cockpits for quite some time. I feel like that was changed around the time of the release slash survival update. So like two to three years ago.
give me all the plate. Go there. Uh, so, platform. First off, let's get a medium cargo in here because I've created a space for it, so I might as well use it. Otherwise, it's just a weird, empty space there that doesn't seem to have much purpose. Yeah, I might have to have a platform that goes around it. Like you say, so that I can uh, just walk around to the window. to get rid of that little stalk here. There we go. Uh, yeah, I should be able to get into the cockpit at the ground at ground level, but I'd like it to look like there's... <laughs> I'd like it to have the look of something that's needed. Just because that's what I'm like. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make this work. suspect it's not going to slide under there. Oh no. It did. Sweet. Huh. So part of me that wants to put a connector there. Mainly for ease of like putting stuff in cargo at the front. Maybe a cockpit with hinges to lift and lower. Uh, if not for the subgrid wheel controls being power hungry, I'd be tempted. Now the question is, if I'm going to put a connector at the front, do I put another cargo container and then put the connector there? Or do I mount the connector back so it's it's safe from collision? I think I mount it back. Energy critical. I think since the bumper is meant to be actually, like, is meant to be properly functional, not just aesthetic, I, I should keep the function out of it. Because as soon as I start putting cargo out the front here, I'm effectively making that cargo vulnerable to quick destruction. Uh, which is not what I'm about. Okay. Yeah. Ah, uh, no, I won't be bothering to pipe up to the cockpit. Uh, I'm on a pressurized planet, so I'm not. I'm not fussed about it. Like I'm on an oxygen-rich planet. leave it. Just trying to give this uh, rover a bit of style because I've been noticing when I've been trying to come up with the thumbnails for this. No energy. Oh. 
I really haven't been able to put the crane in view because the crane doesn't really look like anything. It's just a jumble of blocks. So I wanted to re I wanted to give it something that made it stand out. And I think this is this could easily be that thing. Main gripe with that cockpit is the lack of a large port. Yeah. I, d <laughs> I wonder how much of the decision making around not giving it a large port was let's not make this better than the non-DLC one. Because if they gave it a large port then people could, would, argue that it was better. Be like, oh, I can't do that. Must not do that. It's fair that people argue it. But, <laughs> yeah. I do wonder how much that factored into the decision. Uh, the stand-up redemption I got rid of, just, I hid it this morning. I hid it this morning because I didn't want to uh, stand up while I was cold. Because <laughs> I was cold this morning. It was like 13 degrees in my shed. We've all of a sudden, uh, winter has arrived here. I'm gonna make a new crane control station. No, I wasn't planning on it. I wanted to make sure that that corner piece was the right way around. Let's do this different way. I had these running horizontally for the ver these vertical parts, but I think I'll make them run vertically so they match up with that corner piece. And so they don't line up with the other bits. Yeah. Then I make some sort of um, hinging contraption to get up there. Maybe on the other side. That could work. So, standing up could make you feel warm by being active, but in reality it just means that I can't have a blanket over my legs. <laughs> so, it makes it more cold. <laughs> Fold down crane that comes uh fold down crane fold down ramp that comes off the front. That's what I want. Or even a fold down ladder could work. I think we'll go ramp. With the blanket toga style. Uh that feels like more cold. 13 Celsius is not cold when it's the outside temperature, I guess, but it is when it's the inside temperature and you are stationary. Also, I don't like cold. <laughs> Capac always hated how, uh, how much I disliked the, um, the cold in, in our shared office when we had a shared space. Oh, searchlight under the cockpit? It would look kind of cool. Um, there is an attachment point there. It won't be as functional, but it would look cool. I suppose you can always have two of them. Uh, I'm 
gonna place that so that its default position is forward. Or I'm gonna try to. I don't know which way points backwards. I'm guessing that's forward. Nope. Misinterpreted the base plate. There is an angled part on the face base plate, and that's now pointing forward. So, I don't want this to clang on the... like, to catch on the cockpit. It's just going to get tricky. To make it work and not do that. Let's see. Should be able to make this, like, a metre wide rather than going... Full one and a half. That should still look okay. Oh, that is unpleasant standing on this wheel. Let's get off it. Kind of looks like a combine, and I like it. Yep, yeah, does kind of look like a combine. So that's kind of how long that needs to be. I'm going to try something different with it. Let's turn that on. Lift it up a bit. Let's see what happens if I do this entirely out of pistons. See if I make this out of a pair of pistons and how hard or easy it is to walk along. Because at least the compi at least the pistons will compress down a bit. Yeah, if the if the pistons don't work, I'm gonna do a double hinge in the middle and have it fold up, which might actually look neater to be honest. Maybe I'll do that anyway. Let's get rid of these. Uh, so for a double hinge, I probably want to go with say. That, then go hinge. Am I making another scorpion? No. No, this is the front. I guess it could be a sort of pincer, but hopefully it won't ever do that to me. Hopefully. Now that you mention that, that does make me kind of want to do like this to a stupid level where it's like all hinges and it unfurls. Is that going to be enough? Is that going to be too steep? walk up that. And if I make it a bit better by adding that, so it doesn't sit so high above the ground, I should just be able to walk on, walk onto it. Then what I was thinking I would do is, just to give it a bit of extra width, add these along the sides. So it's not quite as narrow as the trailer ramp. On this side I can probably add more. I don't know what to do with... Um, I don't know what to do with the bit in between, like where the hinges are. Because I'm not sure which way I'm going to have this flip round yet. So it might not quite allow me to put anything in between. I may be able to put plates there though.
Just want to make sure that this has got definitely... It definitely has clearance against the cockpit. Okay. Let's turn it off again and see if I can walk up. Nice. Mostly works. Have the ramp hinge under so it doesn't obstruct the cockpit view. Um, I think that'll be tricky. Don't know that I've left space for that to happen. Like I was thinking of just going up to here and then having these flip forward. I don't think they'll get that much in the way of cockpit view from inside. Have a look. Okay. Ah, oh, yeah, that's not too bad. And yeah, it could, it could fold over the top. That would be an option as well. Uh, but am I going to run into like collider issues with these bits sticking out? If I flip over the top, potentially. Because these blocks I don't think have the reduced collider sizes of the regular armor blocks. So it's, it is safer this way. So what I need to do now is get some more barred windows in. So we've got our catwalk up here. Yeah, I could have blast door blocks at tip maybe, but they're just, yeah. I find them to be a bit annoying because <laughs> they're not the right width. But yes, you, you could definitely do that as an option. If I did the whole thing out of blast door blocks, I'd probably do that. But I want to... Oh, actually, flipping this way allows me to put a... I could even put a railing on this. <laughs> I could make it all have safety. Also, flipping this way makes it easier to do this bit, which I want to do next. Uh, I need a button down here. Let's get the button. Start setting this thing up. I'm happy. I'm happy with how the ramp is. I think that folding mechanism is going to be neat. Hopefully, quick enough that if I ever actually need to use it, which I kind of don't, because I can hop in the cockpit that way. But it's also the ramp mechanism for me to climb up to this, so I am going to use it at least for that. So I don't have to keep jumping on the wheels. Front ramp hinge one. figure out which, how far those hinges need to go. So we've got front, ramp, hinge two and three. Should both have an up which way are they going at the moment? They're at minus 90. Okay, so they both should have an upper limit of zero. If I reverse them. Nope. Set their velocity to two. Oh, I think I've missed a few spawns, so let's just do a couple. Uh, one. Got one. 3.35 this way. And then... Another one. Wow. 
3.94 this way. And then another one. This way, 2Ks. Ooh, nice and close. I was just placed on top of the hinges. Uh, I think this. I think this is working out okay as it is. All right. So what I need to do is find out how low this needs to go. And what's the minimum torque I can get away with? Oh, it actually hits onto the bumper. And I walk onto it from there. I really didn't want to have to jump. I wanted it to be walkable. Nuts. Why was I able to before and I can't now? <laughs> I need to make it longer. I'm going to make it a bit longer. go out to here. It's going to give me, hopefully, the extra bit of range I need. I just really wanted this to be, like, a proper ramp. Because the whole idea of having to jump up onto a ramp seems a bit silly to me. I might use this bit this time. That won't look neater. Try that. Oh, actually, if I'm going to do that. I should probably just do this. Then I think we have a transition block between those two. Maybe. No, we don't. Does anyone remember whether we do or not? I'm not sure we do. Oh, there it is. Got it. And let's lower you down. And... Bunk. Yeah, that's more like it. That's what I want. Thanks, John Keys. <laughs> 100 bits spawns in a cap pack. Yeah, that seems like a very dangerous idea. Just put a half height rail along the side. So in theory, I should be able to get away with this as well, with the way I've done this. And then also do this. Huh. Why is it not letting me do that? Oh, right, because of the stuff underneath. So if I lift this up... that there, have that there, get the half one, which is the other direction, one there and one there. And in theory, with the way I'm doing it as well, I could, if I really wanted to, put uh, like blocks down over these hinges too, and that should be safe. So, which is uh, not too bad. 
Alright, so the limit on this needs to be lower limit of minus... Oops. Minus 50. Cool. Now these ones, if I set their velocity a little bit lower... That'll be fine for going up, but ugh, this is going to be tricky. What's going to happen if I have all these set to the same? I go in here and go front. The unfolding and folding is going to be interesting with these. Front, ramp, hinges. These ones have to travel a further distance than that one. No, they only got 90 degrees to travel. So they should go a bit slower. Let's see what this see what this does. We go groups, we go hinges, we go reverse. That was pretty neat. How about deploying? That's also pretty neat. I'm feeling pretty good about that. <laughs> Who doesn't love a little mechanical thing like that? Yeah. I feel like these need to go a teensy bit faster, so let's go 3.2. Try that. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's as close as I need to get. Yes. Oh, so happy. <laughs> So good. So good. All right, just give me a second. I'm going to go see if I need to do anything about that doorbell and probably give Charlie a let it, letting her out. Make sure she's not going to go and attack Toby immediately. And go and sniff him and lick him and do all the things she shouldn't do. <laughs> I'll be back in just a sec.
Okay, no more Charlie screaming into my microphone. That's probably a good thing. <laughs> Even though it's quite cute sometimes. Alright, we have ramp. More barred windows. And construction components so that I can build the barred windows. I'm going to try not to do the thing that I do so often when I'm at this stage of designing a vehicle, of just laying out a whole bunch of stuff and not finishing any of it. So I think it'd be nice to see this look finished-ish, or at least have components that look finished. So what I was thinking of doing now was making a catwalk that runs right down the side of the vehicle. Uh, with no railings once you get down to this part, because obviously then it's going to obstruct the crane. But if it goes around the back and allows me to access that helm by walking up here, I think that'll be perfect. Yeah, exactly. The trailer. The trailer. The incomplete trailer is exactly what I was thinking about when I was saying that. I was like, yeah, I do that a bit. I'm somewhat happy that I didn't design the trailer straight away, though, because I think then I would have been forced into a particular design, a particular aesthetic, when I did eventually move on to the front, because I'd either have to redesign the trailer or I'd be doing stuff the way the trailer was done. And I wouldn't have a choice. Uh, I think those might get in the way. Uh, true, do need a retract button, that is a good point. Uh, where shall I put a retract button? Maybe on the back of the cockpit? Um, yeah, that was that's a thanks for the reminder, Snake. Um, one of the things I want to do with these hinges is adjust their force so they just barely lift it up. Because if they can just barely lift it up, then if they run into something, they shouldn't generate too much in the way of uh, phantom forces. I had been trying to think of a way I could use gravity to deploy it and have it still function, but I think given the more complex mechanism I ended up choosing, that's not really feasible. Come on, give me the hinge part. Fine. Put it up. No, that didn't help me. <laughs> Whoops. Might help me if I go around here, though. There we go. And a spoiler to the trailer. Uh, don't know about a spoiler to the trailer. The trailer's going to get a proper ramp, though, and proper... a few other proper bits. Um, but that's for later. That's, let's, let's, let's get the truck first. Guys distract me as much as I distract myself, I think. Actually, that's probably over overstating. I definitely distract myself more. I really Oh, oh, oh. Yes, that's the type of button I want to use. Much better. Groups reverse. So pretty. It's perfect. A 
forgot about those buttons. They're much better looking. Because they've got the new modern detail that the old buttons lack. Uh, I think what I'll do is put that there. Then we can get these as catwalk sitting above for some of this. Because it needs to be above to go over to here. I think what I might do is I may actually have the catwalk be asymmetrical. So we'll only have it go along the one side. Oops. That is not the right spot. I just need to go a little bit further, and then we can decide. Then I can start fiddling around and see what I think is going to work. That, that, that. And then what I was thinking of doing was this, and putting uh, putting that as a corner in there. Because obviously the crane's going to be sitting down, lying down the middle. And with the helm on that side, and not on this side, I think it makes sense for the catwalk to just be down one, down along one side. Though there is a part of me that wants the catwalk to stick out a block further. Oops. Fully retract crane, then layout. Uh, I don't want to... F I, I'm just going to try and trust myself. <laughs> rather than doing that, because... I think it'll get in the way of placing some blocks. That I want to place. Uh, I do agree there is some logic to having it down so that I can't... Don't end up putting stuff in the wrong spot. But I also think that I need to have... Um, some degree of... I'll need to have that free space to get it right. Do you know what's annoying about what I just did? Now I want to move the ramp across the block. <laughs> yeah, the catwalk should be functional. Uh, instead of me wheel jumping and doing that silliness to get up to the helm, I'll be able to walk along and go around. Yeah, I'll leave it for now. I can fix it if it really bugs me. It's just the fact that I could make a wider ramp <laughs> if I matched it to this. Alright, so... Three blocks wide should be enough for the engineer. Keep these coming down here. These are really difficult to place. Now they're easier. I think that'll work quite well. There's a part of me that's kind of... tempted to do something a little bit odd, but could look quite interesting. Although, actually no, it wouldn't work. Dang it. I was thinking... <laughs> should I loop the back of this helm around the back of the hinge, but then the helm won't be able to lie down when the crane is down. That'll get stuck. It'll get snagged. So that won't work.
All right, and uh, oh, did you get one? Where is it? Three point three four. Uh, they're not as difficult to weld as they used to be. They used to be really bad. Like when I I complained about it in Survival Impossible in one of the recordings, um, but they've actually made these a lot easier to target in a subsequent update, which I was very happy to see when it happened. Uh, but yeah, they are they are difficult to place. I'm not sure. What, if anything, Keen could do to fix that, though? Because anything they did to make it easier to place these against other blocks would make it more annoying to place them in certain other situations. So it's kind of... They're, they're a bit damned if they do and damned if they don't on that one. I need to go get some more girders. Apparently, I'm using a lot of them. Are there any in here? I think I used up all the ones in here. Oh no. Got more. Can you get me a little bit further. No, I'm doing this wrong. Nuts. These should be the block above, not the block below, because then I can put stuff underneath them to look for supports. That'll do, I think. And if I flip... Hopefully, I'll be able to get away with this not looking too weird. If it does, I can always fix the other bits up later. <laughs> Shivering makes you scared. Ah, uh, it's fine. Whoops. I'm so used to it now, it, I don't even notice. Whoops. There goes a girder. Yeah, now I can put, like, um, steel plate supports, whatever I want to do as supports for the catwalk that runs down the side. Now, I can't make this go too far, because then it's going to impact with the hitch for the trailer. So I'm a bit limited to what I can do here. There's one somewhere in the grass there that I'm never going to... Oh, take that back, that I'm only going to get lucky and find. <laughs> yeah. Uh, girders. That'll hopefully do me. Oh yeah. This is good. Gives me a bit... Yeah, I'm happy with the truck redesign so far. Looking at it as, at a distance. Energy low. It's got a little bit more of an interesting profile. I'm definitely going to want to paint it, but I'm going to want to keep it rusty. I may use l some not heavy rust on it, but for now I'm just going to leave it with the heavy. Yeah, it's turning into an actual vehicle, yeah. So, I'm going to get rid of those bits, so that all these are done at the same height. I'm 
trying to think of what's going to be the best way to do it. Oh, maybe if I left one of those. No. What's going to be the best way? Oh, wait. What am I talking about? It's easy. Just had a little brain fart. Don't worry. Duh. See it, Zabba. Yeah. Yeah, the jiggling with placing the tiny little blocks <laughs> gets a bit much. Makes you really want to be able to place it in creative mode. Uh, okay, I can keep going for a little bit further. Fence is going to have to end. Might end it over the connector, actually. With... No, not that one. That, and that, and then I'll get rid of the one that's on top and I'll place replace it with a panel. I'll angle it down, make a, make a corner on it. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe I can do that out of the steel plate so it gives it a nice clear edge. Really wish. Get rid of that one just for this one little bit. I'm gonna try something. So if we go first with that bit down, is that the right orientation? Yes. That bit down there. Then I put this one here. Then I go around and I put the plate corner bit there, and then another one there. Then I put these along the top. That way. That should give us a nice little angled part. I hope. Give it an intentional looking end on it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I think it maybe needs the extra one coming right up to the top. I think that works. Man, I love having a regular old ramp. So, to make that work, I'm going to do this. Once I have some steel plate. That goes there. Eventually get the right rotation. That goes there. Yo -ho. Come on. There we go. Yeah, I think that looks neater. What I'll probably do with the rest of the like for I'll put some supports under the rest of the catwalk as well. That'll be little armor bits like that. And I think low. once there's more than just one, it won't look so odd. Energy critical. This definitely looks odd still at the moment. Hey, Park Pixels. I'm pretty good. A little sleep deprived, but that's to be expected. Oh. 
I have used up a lot of construction components. <laughs> the subgrid sounds like a radiation meter going. Yeah. It, it is almost a bit like a Geiger counter. Come on. Hold up, would you? See you, Gobi. You say you shouldn't be allowed to play Fallout because you can't remember the name Geiger Counter. I've never played Fallout. Any of them. After watching Capac struggles with getting them to work, I'm not sure it's going to happen, ever. How much further do I want to go down along here with... Like, how much can I get away with, I guess, is what I'm saying. So if I go too far, it's going to impinge on that trailer hitch. And that'll be bad. Should be able to maybe... Oh, maybe I can go around. Yeah, that would be a pretty severe angle for me to be at for that to impinge on it. So that should be okay. It's going to be fun to grind out. Where is it? There it is. Yeah. Now I've just got to make sure <laughs> that... In putting this down, I don't actually impact the crane in any negative way. Can't have OHS stuff here because, well, <laughs> this wouldn't, this would get in the way of function if I did that. So there's no railings. Gets placed as is. Alright, let's see. So, I come to a park. Stop the truck. Hit the button. I can walk up. Walk around. Hop in the helm nice and easy. Lift up the crane so we don't smack into everything. Make sure I can do a full rotation. Nice. Now, obviously, if the crane is lower down, I'm a little bit lower. But I think I'm still clear. So if I lift that up that way instead... Let's drop right down. So I drop right down, I might get stuck. Let's see. Yes, I get stuck. Oh, wait, no, that... I think I got stuck on the forklift then. <laughs> Look at that! Perfection! Ah, oh, so happy. Also, 
given the clearance I had, this can come out further. Fair enough. Where was my earth shattering thunk? Oh, I guess it was the forklift. Yes. Yes, no jumping around anymore. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> I love it. It does mean I've got this railing to try and dodge later, but oh, I'm so happy. This feels good to me. Like, this is this is making it feel like I designed it intentionally. <laughs> and that it hasn't just happened this way. I just don't forget the ramp is down. Yeah. Really looking forward to the event control over there. do it with a sensor. Like, I could probably have a sensor just detecting the cockpit, and when the player enters that area, it reverses the hinges, but the trouble is then it might sometimes pop it down. Um, let's go, let's go test out on some steeper slopes. I think the angle available there is actually pretty decent. But let's let's go up and down some hills and find out. No, I shouldn't have raised the thing. I'm gonna do this this way. I spent the time and effort building it. I'm gonna use it. So we have handbrake on and off. See if we run into any problems. Uh, all right, that hill will probably do the trick. The cockpit still looks a bit weird from this side. I. But at the front, I'm really happy with how it looks. I feel like the connector needs to be moved out a block, at least. So it looks like it's supporting the cockpit a bit more. So it'll be something like going up a slope like that. That's all fine. Let's see if this one's steep enough to cause a problem. Yeah, even that steepness of slope, I'm still not colliding. Try over, try it over the craggy bit and see if that's enough. This part looks like there's a fairly steep angle. Oh, that just barely contacted at that angle. Just there. That's pretty extreme. Let's see what angle that is. What angle is that on the hinge? Oh, that's actually not. It's not. It's hitting its hinge limit. I somehow lined it up perfectly with the same hinge limit. Perfect. So I've lost nothing. It 
So, when jackknifed, obviously, I've lost a bit. Uh, like, I can't go up a slope and jackknife at the same time, so maybe I'll have to make it two blocks wide and narrow it there. Because there I'm colliding. Uh-oh. I did miss your spawn. I'll fix that in a second. Yeah. Hmm. Could I do... Does the hitch need to have... I like the little rise in it, though. Um. Might have to try it being just two blocks wide. Uh-oh. I just grind that. Could have been real bad. That'll hopefully make it so that I don't run into it too often. Three point eight. Oh yeah, I could use rotor displacement to the lower the hitch bit as well. That's a good point. That gives a tiny bit of extra clearance. Cool. I'm happy. Uh, I think this being a bit narrow is, you know, just is what it is. There are just certain limitations you can't avoid without considerable redesign. Like, I'd have to move the hitch back a block, and I don't really want to do that, because as soon as I move it back further, it puts the weight on a different point. I don't really want to do that. get the feeling this vehicle will suddenly shoot up into the sky? No, it's fine. Ah, so the reason I'm doing the GPS commands the way that I'm doing them is they each denote where one of the scrap spawns has ended up. So if I... Because the thing only appears on the screen for about 10 seconds, I need to make a mark of where the distance to it is, and then the second marker gives me the heading. I set it up so that people can redeem using channel points so that I do spawns, because it means that I'm more likely to find scrap, which speeds up the whole being a stream thing. Uh, obviously, if this was edited content, I'd be able to just edit around the slower parts. So I wouldn't worry about it, but being a stream... It seemed like a decent way of avoiding some of those issues. I guess I can go collect some things. See if I manage to find something useful. But before I do that... I'm going to unnecessarily use my ramp. <laughs> I'm going to do that a lot. I'm going to move this connector a bit forward. Yeah, I think one block should be enough.
And then I'm going to put another light on the roof. Because as much as I like that little searchlight down here, I might put, turn its idle off. Uh, <laughs> it's not the most practical. I might turn its targeting off. Just leave it shooting straight forward. Just so I've got a nice straightforward one. And then I'll have a separate search one. I think having one up here is going to be more useful. Much better line of sight. Yeah, I... <sighs> I wish that Keen would add the ability to have clockwise and anti-clockwise as control instructions for rotors. So that you can do the similar do similar things to what you do when you're doing extend and retract the pistons. I really wish we would have that. It would be so useful. off. This targeting is on. Cool. Yeah. Ramp up. Uh, there, there is a clockwise and anti-clockwise for rotors already. Like, it already exists. Um, in my rotor tutorial, I broke it down, but you can see it's by, you can see the numbers on the thing. Clockwise is in looking at the rotor this way. Clockwise is as you're looking at it. It's in this orientation because you can see that goes from 180 around to 225, around to 270, 315, zero. So it's in this orientation. There already is a clockwise and anti-clockwise. And it's clearly defined. Um, so like it's it's already there. They could they could just give it to us. I've got the ability to push stuff out and bring it back. Like it's creative mode, even though it's not. It's weird. might come from the improvised engineering thing. Okay. Ramps up. Let's start knocking off these GPSs. Uh... Turn those off. Yeah, I possibly do want the ramp on hotbar and the trailer ramp too. Okay, two Ks. Reckon we can see what it is already. Something in the grass here. Dropped a random block. Oh, that's the block I launched. <laughs> that's where it's ended up. Where is it? You know, just 770 meters from base. It's totally normal throw. Why the pink light on the crane? Yeah, that's it gives me an a clear idea of where the end of the crane is. It's it's actually a fairly helpful little thing to do. Alright, let's keep going. Until we're 2k's out. Hopefully that 
wind turbine I can see is the thing I'm heading towards. There's another abandoned... Oh, I've lost it. Yeah, I think it is. This is one of the watchtowers that we haven't been to yet. Yay. Stop there. That is 2Ks. Yep, that's pretty much on bang on 2Ks. Let's delete that GPS. So I don't end up not doing that, because I think I didn't do that on the previous ones and it caused some problems for me. What's in the shed first? Oh, engine! Nice! Engine and tank. About the wall so we can grab this after we check out the watchtower. Watchtower and got turlet. And of course I grabbed a ladder too low. Ooh, I left most of this intact. Interesting. Some bottles. bed. Anything in there? Provision welder. That would have been nice earlier on. This thing has a wind turbine, but I don't know if I want to bother bringing it back home. I think I left exhausts being able to be made. Yeah, I did. They're decorative only, so I was like, y you can... I'm not going to take those from people. Uh, anything good in the door? Door has a couple of computers. Inventory full. At this point, you're running a rescue for abandoned wind turbines. A little bit. A little bit. I'm going to do something to make this easier. Oh, that worked. Perfect. That. Might as well grab that stuff and run out of space. No refineries, no assemblers. Can't place blocks. Lots of them. All the good things. Inventory full. Yep, salvage only survival. S O S. Oof, seven Ks. Seven point eight. Jeez, that's a long way away. Grab the like, good bits out of this offset door. Nope. You're going to force me to climb the ladder, aren't you? Alrighty. Let's turn it pink. So I remember that I've been here. 
pink the toilet. I'll pink the little um, outhouse too. <laughs> Wind turbines do have motors. They also have computers. Um, which does make me tempted to go up there and get it. This has a power cell. I don't think I need another engine. I've got quite a few at home, so I'm going to grind this one right down. I want the power cell more than I, more than I want the block. Oh. Apparently I went back to being a high schooler for a second there. Is my voice cracked? Up we go. Don't need to be carrying all those. They're massive and pointless for me. And I think this hinge will have a couple of computers in it too. Can get to it. Yeah, there we go. Sweet. That was a good find. Let's see what the next one holds. Uh, Toby and my other half are doing well. Tired, understandably, but otherwise well. Uh, right, GPS. Let's turn on this one. Let's turn on all of them so I can see where it is. It's It's been amusing me a little bit. Um, the number of comments on the YouTube VODs like, can we get a mod list? I'm like, well, the mods aren't out. So, I mean, you can have a list, but it doesn't do, do you any good. Because <laughs> I haven't released them yet. I've been getting there, though. It's close. Who is closer to me? Marginally? Maybe? Yeah, I have a lot of power. I'm all good. I've said that before and I've been wrong, but this time I think I'm right. <laughs> Line you two up. Uh, that'll do. Alright, let's get to 2.15k's from that. Uh, also, delete that. How dare I make space engines look like fun? This is this is honestly. Oh, I love I love playing space engineers this way. And really, the the inspiration for it does come from Duck Roll and Escape from Mars. He did it first, and he did it very, very well. That's so good that Wicko has kept that up to date. I might have made a mistake trying to get up here. I think I need softer suspension. There we go. Let's line those two up again because I'm almost at the distance for them. In fact, I think we found it. We have another hangar. Huh. Yep, that's it. That's going to be the right one. Alright, let's delete those GPSs. What have we got here?
More solar panels. Nice. Uh, I've got a version of this without the dead body because I think the dead body is a bit out of place. I liked it when I originally had it, but yeah, I think I'm going to do... I'm going to get rid of those. Because it is night time, this door is not functional. Uh, I'm going to grind through it. But I want the parts from it anyway, so that's okay. What do we have in here? Efficient welder. Pointless grinder. Toilet. Have you got anything? Yes. I'll take your ammo. I was very lucky to find this particular hangar as my first spawn when I started before. When I started this. Uh, we got an O2H2 gen in here, and I think... This is the O2 tank, isn't it? Yeah, I don't need another tank. I like those computers, though. If I ever do get some ice, like a big haul of ice, I'm probably going to want this O2H2 gen, so I'm going to bring it home. Access denied. Oh, because there are batteries on here. Oh, and there's a tank in here. Battery. <laughs> the dead body has feelings too. Uh, sure. Oh, that didn't sound good. with the ramp. It's the best. Nope. Still on detached mode. Still not owned. Oh, right, because the hydrogen tank. Oh, something's twisting me around. Oh, no. a heavy landing. I, d I think it was the block the battery I was carrying was the heavy landing. Nope. It was me landing on the tank. That was the heavy landing. I see. It's not great. Still sounds like that, even if I'm not carrying something. There we go. Uh, now can I take the O2H2 gen out? Yes. Might use the regular ramp for this because this is a bit bigger. Unless I can hold it up higher. Nope. Dump you over. Oh no, wait. Uh, let's put you over this side. So you're not in the way of the 
walking ramp. That's the other thing I'm gonna have to think about. When I put the proper ramp on this trailer, it needs to not block off effectively one of these spots. Uh, I can place dead engineers. See? Other than having a radio component. I still need to bury the one back at my base, though. So that was suggested, and I like the idea, and I still need to do it. I haven't got around to it yet. Right, let's grab some steel plate, because I need some. Or I'm going to need some at some, some at some point. I don't have a ramping back because I haven't built it yet. That's all. Nothing more complicated than that. Haven't made a proper ramp yet. This is when the elite grinder is king. Inventory full. Alright, get the solar cells, and then we can continue on to the next one. No solar cells in that one. Uh, in this one. Yep, I just killed the dead body. I am a monster. I'm even more of a monster as I do this. Thanks, Elemental. Thanks for the 500 bits. Uh, cool. Next GPS. Uh, 3.04. Where are they at? Hide the home base for a second. Oh, what? So I think this is around this way. If I am correct, which I might not be. be right. Yeah, I always play with grid inventory size at realistic. I dislike having a single container hold my entire collection of stuff. It defeats any need for um, logistics. I don't, I don't like having a single large grid large container hold everything I ever want ever. Feels It feels like I'm missing out on part of the game. I don't usually play on suit realistic though. That ends up feeling even too grindy for me. <laughs> Do I attract many cats with that giant laser pointer? Uh, yeah. Probably. I'm sure a cat pack will show up at some point. Around one of these laser pointers. Alright, another three, another one K to go. Somewhere 700 meters ahead of me, there is a grid. My searchlight has not spotted it yet. Oh, is that a thing? No, that wasn't. 200 meters. Uh, okay, it should be somewhere right in front of me. Is that it? That might be it. Feels like it's too far away though. 
Yeah, this is further. This is a different grid. I found a thing, but it's not the thing I was looking for. This is where things get confusing. Do I delete that GPS? Do I not? I don't know. Because I'm 4Ks out from base. Is there a... What about this one? Is this about the right distance? Uh, let's hide the others. No, they're not right either. Huh. I think my attitude is going to be if I find a thing heading for that GPS, I'm just going to tick off that GPS. <laughs> uh, we have a drill. We have a partially destroyed battery. Guess I'll take the battery. Just going to need the crane. on here that has ownership and stopping me huh seriously Is there a cargo container hidden somewhere that I don't see what's going on oh where is ownership coming from That fix it. Nope. Alright. Guess we're doing it this way. Once I get some computers. Just take the whole truck and figure it out later. There's part of me that does want to do that more often. Oh. Wheel suspension. What? What? Dare you haircut? Give me the thing. See what? What? Why is it not letting me do it this time, but it's let me do it lots of other times? I'm trying to understand the difference, and I don't understand it. No hidden blocks. Weird. It's real weird. Every other time it's let me use this trick. I'm perplexed. I'm confused. I don't see any gyro, and I've split the thing in half, so there's nothing on the back, and nothing showed up in the list when I was, when I did the search, so that was, it's odd. I mean, let's be honest, we all know that ownership in Space Engineers gets weird. Try now. No, it's still not mine. <laughs> the heck? Oh well. Pick it up the crane in a sec. Let's go check what's inside here. That was close to coat hangering me. Computers. Don't care about that.
Uh, I suppose I'll take them. Oh, I don't care about the bottles either. Inventory full. Huh. Should see what's in those top ones. I've got so many bottles. I really don't need more bottles. See you, Cumbrian. Oh, um... On the topic of it being late for some people in certain parts of the world. Uh, next week... Oh, plushie. Nice. Next week, I... My part of the world goes to Daylight Savings. Or goes off Daylight Savings, I should say. Oh, another plushie. Uh, so... I'm going to try to do something. We'll see how how it works with um, my impending increasing tiredness. Oh, five power cells. Nice. I'm going to try and start my streams at what is 6am local time. We'll see. We'll see if I can manage to pull that off. Um, it might work. It'll mean that effectively for those in not my local time zone. Uh, the streams will remain at exactly the same time in your local time. And there is nothing of value in this dumpster. Really should have expected it is a dumpster. Uh, I started at 7am local time today. Because, yeah, when the Daylight Savings time changes, we get the one from everyone who goes forward. And then another hour from everyone who goes backwards. Uh, it's, oh, it's all bad. My summertime is much better for me. Because <laughs> it means I'm at a time that works much better for Eurozone. My winter time and Eurozone summertime makes for a very difficult time difference. Fortunately, the morning time isn't usually too bad for North America, on the whole. What am I doing? Getting in the crane. That's what I'm doing. Uh, so that's that doesn't worry me too much. But yeah, it's not great for Eurozone, folks. See, so yeah, I'm, I'm going from UTC plus 11 to plus 10. Uh, it's almost midday here. It's the moment. Too far. Six. Lock. Sweet. That was all I wanted from that. Go back. And we resettle. I really like daylight saving. I don't like... Well, I like... <laughs> thing that I like is Daylight Savings Time. I wish we would just be UTC plus 11 all the time. I prefer that time. It works much better for me. I don't mind getting up in the dark. I don't mind um, that side of things. What I do mind is having it be dark at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. 
And in summer, it's really nice when it's dark at 8 p.m. instead of 7 p.m. Because that's the time of day that I use the light more. All right, I'm deleting that GPS that I did. Let's do the next one. Yeah, Mackerel, having a 4 a.m. start, I don't feel like daylight savings or not makes that particularly better or worse. That's just bad regardless. That's just rough. Oh. Oh, that's down in the hole. We're, we're going to pretend that one doesn't exist. <laughs> Thanks, the real ice base. Thanks for four months. The bottoms of the canyons do not exist. They are a fallacy. A fiction. A myth. I could see the distance marker on the second one of those GPS things. So I think I'm on the correct side of it, but I'm not sure. Yeah, for me, the, the daylight savings time thing, I like the daylight savings time, but as someone who's previously been in a position where I had to work a night shift that was an extra hour longer that was unpaid because they're jerks um, yeah I could do away with the change very close to the forklift Oop, ran over the forklift a little bit that's fine, it'll be okay Nothing to see here. Thank, thanks for the kind words, I suppose. <laughs> I'm fortunate to be in this position. All right, let's go. Three point three k's. It's not too far. I'm going to get so distracted on the further, the longer range ones that I marked out. So distracted. Well, my, like, because I set my own schedule for the most part, like, obviously my uh, job at the university that I started recently, I don't get to set my schedule for that. Uh, Alright, that's the thing in front of me. But because of, like, for the streaming, I set my own schedule, which is kind of based on when it, when the audience are around. When you guys are around. Uh, so I can kind of sort of not have to switch to Daylight Savings. If I really wanted to, in a way. But it doesn't mean that the shops are open any later. Yeah. As an Aussie, I do feel bad that other, especially... Well, I mean, Western Australians are really stuffed by the time that I do stuff. Two things. It is ridiculously early for them. It's not too bad for the Kiwis. At least it's kind of late morning. But yes, I do feel a little bad. A little bad that the um, the Aussies are the ones that get 
stuffed the most by the time that I do things. <laughs> so it means they have to be morning people. This appears to be the same truck. Um, might just grab the hydrogen tank. That's the reason why you live on takeout and order all other essentials to be delivered. Oh, no, 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 no. I like cooking. Although I do get pretty much everything delivered these days. Not my groceries though. I like to pick my fruit. And the fruit shop that I like to go to doesn't deliver. Fruit shops that I like to go to. There's one of them a little one of them is a little shop that actually has the best fruit. Veg. As one would expect. Yeah, sure, why not? That can be like that. <laughs> it's a terrible way to attach that. Uh, dear. Okay, can I steal these without breaking them? And they're both mine. Much as I know these batteries aren't especially useful, having a little extra power source for when I'm... Oh, no! Curses. Oh, that battery's gone. Um, <laughs> having a little extra power source around is quite useful. Oop. From time to time. Uh, I was being relatively careless there because, well, obviously these batteries aren't a big deal. I can just go get them from unknown signals. Uh, if that was a more important block, I would have been more careful. Oh. So happy with how that looks. Groups. Ramp goes down, ramp goes up, ramp goes down, ramp goes up. Oh yeah, the trailer ramp's down. Need that too. I love that style of mechanism with the double hinge and things. It just always looks so neat. Some sort of intact powered block at the back of the truck, you think? Uh, there is a... There's a tank in here? Oh, it's got computers. That's right. I want those. But I don't think there's anything else. But yes, thank you for the reminder about the computers. I want them. Uh, going down too far is better than not going down far enough. And it's only too far because I've left my wheels soft. Once I strengthen this back up, it'll go back to, to right. Oops, wrong one. There we go. Uh, it's a searchlight, not a laser antenna. Um, the searchlight is pointing at the grid because I've got it targeting neutrals. It helps me find these grids in amongst the grass. It's really quite helpful. Uh, if you're ever doing those search missions that um, you can do with the economy stuff, 
really handy way to find stuff is to have a searchlight pointing to them. If this is over this side or if it's over a different side. I have to go back to base. This this is an annoying thing about this method of doing things. It is um, not as helpful when you're at a distance from the markets. But um, I think I'm pretty happy with my progress today. So I think I'm going to call it here. I am really happy with how the truck's coming together. I think next week we'll, I'll be able to do some extra design elements to make the catwalk look a bit supported and hopefully start designing the trailer to fit in with the design up here and maybe start messing around with some paint job on it to give it a bit more style. It'll still stay rusty because I think not rusty just feels out of place. Felt weird having cleanish paint when I'm salvaging everything. I'm going to hopefully find some time this week to do a little bit of work on the mod uh, and do the last little touch-ups so that I can publish it in the next week or so, I hope. Um, Toby may well have his own perspective on that. That may change when, <laughs> when anything happens, but I will try. So, yeah. Um, I'll be back on Monday with some more... Uh, Minecraft stuff, and on Tuesday, the Twitch Integration Space Engineers test. So, come along for that and mess with me. And see if we can break Nev's plugin. <laughs> see if we can make it all go ridiculous. I have a plan for like a little goal that I'm going to do. What I'm thinking I'm going to do at this stage is uh, spawn in the teal terror. The, the big, the real teal. Wait, which one's the, I can't remember which one. No, the teal terror was the big ship. The real teal was the little one. Uh, yeah, spawn in the big rover and have a goal to get to some ice to mine it to get to space. And if I get to space before you guys kill me, then I win. <laughs> so there's all that and plenty more to come. And I will see you then. Thanks for coming, everybody.